everyone i hope you all are doing good and staying safe my name is shashank mishra and i'm working as a data engineer at amazon in today's video i am going to talk about the most important thing nowadays in the it industry that is cloud and it is the most most important skill set for any of the development profile and if you don't remember in my previous video i talked about the aws part and its important services so if you haven't watched this video here or here would be the link you can just go and check that video and before starting the main cloud computing video i would ask you to like this video and share it with your friends and if you are new to the channel then make sure to subscribe and press the notification icon so that you are updated with all amazing videos on this platform all right so now we will talk about the cloud computing and before starting the actual component and the actual agenda of cloud computing i just want to let you know guys that this is something which is really really important nowadays if you are in a software development or if you are even choosing any of the career profile this is something which is really important because most of the companies they are shifting from the on premises thing to the like cloud side so let's say whenever you will be interviewing for different job profiles they will definitely treat it as a plus like if in your past employees you have worked on the cloud components or if you have a good knowledge about the cloud part this is going to be treated as a plus and like even if you have mentioned these things in your resume you will stand apart from the crowd and yeah that's that's why it is really really important to know and i will basically talk about the cloud computing from the very basic and not going to deep dive into every single aspect but talking more about why cloud and different uh, categorizations of it what are the big companies which is uh, using the cloud and like who are actually working as a cloud service provider so we will be talking about that one but sabse pehle jo hum ek part dekhenge wo ye ki cloud computing hai kya hum sab iske bare mein itna baat karte hain ki cloud computing cloud computing so iski basic definition ko pehle hum jaan lete hain what is cloud computing so cloud computing is on demand access via the internet to computing resources application servers like it could be physical servers virtual servers data storage development tools networking capabilities and more hosted at a remote data center managed by csp that is cloud service provider so the definition this technical definition itself suggests what is cloud computing that you have something which is लोकेटेड एट द रिमोट लोकेशन ठीक है जिसके बारे में हमें कुछ नहीं पता है बट जब भी हमें कोई भी ऐसा कंप्यूटिंग रिसोर्स चाहिए वी कैन जस्ट गेट इट ऑन डिमांड जस्ट लाइक अक्रॉस द इंटरनेट क्योंकि आज के इंटरनेट के टाइम में हर चीज को हम वेब एप्लीकेशन पे एक्सेस कर सकते हैं सो सिमिलरली इवन नाउ अड इज इफ यू नीड द कंप्यूटिंग रिसोर्सेज यू कैन एक्सेस इट अक्रॉस द इंटरनेट सो दैट्स वाई कोई ऐसी चीज जो कि इट सेल्फ कहीं रिमोट जगह पे लोकेटेड है एंड हम उसको एक्सेस कर पा रहे हैं बाय सिटिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ आवर लैपटॉप यूजिंग दी वेब एप्लीकेशन सो दैट इज इट सेल्फ अ क्लाउड कि एक ऐसी चीज जिसके बारे में फिजिकली हमें नहीं पता है कि वो कहाँ पे लोकेटेड है क्या पता है बट हम क्या कर पा रहे हैं स्टिल उन चीजों को एक्सेस कर पा रहे हैं जब हमें जिस भी तरीके की नीड है तो क्लाउड पे केवल कंप्यूटिंग हम क्यों बोलते हैं क्योंकि आप कोई भी सिंगल चीज परफॉर्म करते हो कोई भी आपको एक ऑपरेशन परफॉर्म करना है इट विल बी ट्रीटेड एज अ कॉम्प्यूटेशन ठीक है उसको परफॉर्म करने के लिए आपको बहुत सारी चीजों की जरूरत हो सकती है अगर हम एक सिंपल सी वेबसाइट की बात करें ठीक है कि एक हमारी वेबसाइट बनाई हुई ई कॉमर्स की सो वट वी विल बी डूइंग वी एक्चुअली नीड दी एक वेब सर्वर जहां पर कि हम अपनी एप्लीकेशन को होस्ट कर सकें एंड that will be executing on the web server and apart from that we need a database which will be storing the data right and we need the dns jo ki host vagera ke liye hai and we need the load balancers so these kind of components we actually want and ye sab kya hai ki agar let's say hum khud se bana rahe maine normal se ek website banayi and main usko apne laptop pe run karna cha raha hu theek hai so hum kya karte hain uske liye jaise maine database banaya तो डेटाबेस के लिए माइसिकल वगैरह हम इंस्टॉल कर लेते हैं एंड फिर उसके बाद जैसे वेब सर्वर वगैरह के लिए हो गए तो लोकल होस्ट पे ही हम एक्सेस कर पाते हैं जो भी हम जिस पोर्ट पे रन करते हैं अपनी सर्विस को एंड उस वेब पेज को होम पेज को हम एक्सेस कर पाते हैं 
एंड फिर बैक एंड में जो एपीआई लिखी हुई होती हैं इट यूज टू इंटरेक्ट विद दी डेटा बेसिस एंड सब कुछ काम हो रहा होता है तो ये सब करने के लिए हमें क्या करना पड़ा हमने एक अपने लैपटॉप पे सेटअप कर लिया बट अब एक बड़ी एप्लीकेशन की बात कर सकते हैं विच इज एक्चुअली सर्विंग टू मिलियंस ऑफ कस्टमर्स सो ऑब्वियसली उसका एक स्केल बहुत बड़ा होगा उसको बड़े लेवल पे डिप्लॉय करना पड़ता है जहां पे यू नीड मल्टीपल कॉमोडिटी हार्डवेयर एंड इट शुड बी लाइक अवेलेबल ट्वेंटी फोर इंटू सेवन आपकी चीजें अवेलेबल होनी चाहिए कभी भी ऐसा नहीं कि हाँ किसी भी रैंडम रीजन से एप्लीकेशन बंद हो गई है और ये सारी आपके सामने ब्लॉकर्स आ रहे हैं तो क्लाउड इन्हीं सब चीजों को रेक्टिफाई करता है एंड एक स्मूद आपके लिए एक एक ऐसा प्लेटफॉर्म है जो कि इंटरनेट पे आपके लिए अवेलेबल है जहां पे आप कभी भी आपको कुछ चाहिए कंप्यूटिंग से रिलेटेड यू कैन गेट इट वेरी वेरी इजीली सो दैट्स दी थिंग जो कि यहां पे भी मेंशन है कि आपको सर्वर्स चाहिए चाहे वो फिजिकल वर्चुअल सर्वर्स वी कैन जस्ट लाइक गेट इट ऑन डिमांड हमको डेटा स्टोरेज चाहिए कोई भी नो सिकल डेटा कोई भी ट्रांजेक्शनल डेटा कोई इवन लेट्स ए डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड फाइल स्टोरेज सिस्टम सो हमको वो भी मिल सकता है हमको कोई नेटवर्किंग कैपेबिलिटीज चाहिए लाइक कोई सबनेट्स वगैरह बनाने हैं सो so, वो भी हमको यहां से मिल सकता है तो इस तरीके की जितनी भी पॉसिबल चीजें वी कैन गेट इट फ्रॉम दी क्लाउड एंड नाउ लाइक दी सी एस पी क्लाउड सर्विस प्रोवाइडर्स मेक्स द रिसोर्सेज अवेलेबल फॉर अ मंथली सब्सक्रिप्शन फी और बिल्स देम अकॉर्डिंग टू यूजेज एंड ये एक बहुत बड़ी ब्यूटी है किसी भी क्लाउड प्लेटफॉर्म की कि यहां पर हमको क्या करना पड़ रहा है हमको किसी चीज का लेट से ऐसा नहीं कि लाइसेंस हमको हर साल चाहिए हमें को उसका रिन्यूअल कराना है ठीक है आप पूरे साल की फी पे कर रहे हो डजेंट मैटर कि आप उसको पूरे साल में केवल एक घंटे यूज करते हो बट स्टिल आपको उतने पे करना ही करना है ठीक है तो ये एक ड्रॉबैक्स हैं जो कि हमारे ऑनप्रमाइस सिस्टम्स के साथ में होते हैं बट क्लाउड में इसी चीज की एक ब्यूटी है कि जितनी देर के लिए आप चीजों को कंज्यूम कर रहे हो उतनी देर के लिए ही आपको क्या करना है उसकी पेमेंट करनी है जितना आपने कंजम्पन करा जितना रिसोर्स ऑक्यूपाई करें जितनी कॉम्प्यूटेशन करी एंड जितनी देर के लिए चीजें रन हुई बस उतने पार्ट के लिए ही आपको पेमेंट करनी है आपको कभी इस चीज के लिए कंसर्न नहीं करना यार इतना बड़ा क्लस्टर लेना है मुझे भले हम उसको थोड़ी देर के लिए यूज करें साल में लेट से दो महीने चार महीने केवल बट हमको पे पूरे साल के लिए करना है तो ये एक बहुत ही बड़ा एडवांटेज है नाउ हेयर यू कैन सी इन दिस डायग्राम की क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग आज के टाइम में अक्रॉस दी इंटरनेट हम बात करें आप टेलीविजन वगैरह देख रहे हो स्मार्ट टीवीज वगैरह है उस पर बैठ के कुछ भी एक्सेस कर पा रहे हो रिमोट सर्वर्स पे सेम एप्लीकेशन सर्वर्स हो गए कोड डिप्लॉयमेंट की हो गई बात आप यहाँ पे हो अपने किसी भी क्लाउड प्लेटफॉर्म पे कोड डिप्लॉय कर दिया एंड उसके बाद मशीन बंद एंड इट इज जस्ट गेटिंग एग्जीक्यूटेड देर आपको कुछ भी उसके टेंशन नहीं है सिमिलरली लाइक लैपटॉप मोबाइल पीसी डेटा सब जगह से एक्सेसिबल हैं क्लाउड प्लेटफॉर्म्स एंड इवन जो भी आप सर्विसेज यूज कर रहे हो ओवर द इंटरनेट एंड जो कि मोस्टली होस्टेड है ऑन द क्लाउड प्लेटफॉर्म सो यू कैन सी द विजिबिलिटी हाउ दिस इंटायर क्लाउड पार्ट इज वर्किंग टूगेदर नाउ वी विल एक्चुअली लुक एट द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कंपेरिजन राइट विद द ऑन प्रिमाइस एंड लाइक हाउ दिस कंपेरिजन एक्चुअली वर्क बिटवीन द ऑन प्रिमाइस एंड द क्लाउड प्लेटफॉर्म्स बिकॉज समटाइम्स इट्स अ काइंड ऑफ डिबेट एज वेल बहुत सारे एंटरप्राइजेज हैं जो कि आज भी ऑन प्रिमाइस इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर चीजों को प्रिफर करते हैं एंड वाई क्योंकि उनके लिए वो यूज केस ऐसा है सो फॉर एन एग्जाम्पल कोई भी फाइनेंशियल सर्विसेज की कंपनी है फॉर एग्जाम्पल वीजा राइट तो हमको पता है कि वीजा एक है कि फिनटेक के डोमेन में आता है एंड दे यूज टू हैंडल लाइक मिलियंस ऑफ ट्रांजेक्शन एवरी डे सो फॉर देम दी डेटा प्रिवेसी एंड डेटा क्रिटिकलिटी इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट एंड उस चीज को किसी भी तरीके से मैनेज करने के लिए आज भी वो क्लाउड पे मूव ना करके उन्होंने सब कुछ अपना ही बनाया हुआ है लाइक इवन दे हैव जैसे कि क्लाउड प्रोवाइडर्स हमारे काम करते हैं किस तरीके से उनके अपने बड़े बड़े डेटा सेंटर्स होते हैं जहां पे कि वो सारी चीजों को और जो भी हमें इंफ्रा चाहिए या जो भी रिसोर्सेज चाहिए वो उनके पास अवेलेबल होते हैं एंड वी जस्ट लाइक हमको एक रिक्वेस्ट एस करनी होती है एंड उसके बाद हमें वो चीजें अवेलेबल हो जाती हैं सो सेम तरीके का डेटा प्लेटफॉर्म और क्लाउड प्लेटफॉर्म उन्होंने अपने पास ही बना रखा है जो कि उनके थ्रू ही मैनेज्ड है कोई भी थर्ड पार्टी या कोई थर्ड पार्टी क्लाउड प्रोवाइडर इन बिटवीन नहीं है तो उनके लिए ये इंपॉर्टेंट इस वजह से हो गया क्योंकि वो किसी भी कंट्री में अगर आप ऑपरेट कर रहे हो गवर्नमेंट के बहुत प्रोटोकॉल्स होते हैं इन टर्म्स ऑफ दी डेटा प्रिवेसी एंड ऑल सो क्लाउड एक ऐसी चीज है जो कि अक्रॉस द ग्लोब अवेलेबल है तो गवर्नमेंट्स बहुत ज्यादा रिस्ट्रिक्शंस वहां पे भी पुट करते हैं कि आप नहीं क्लाउड प्लेटफॉर्म्स पे नहीं रख सकते आपका अपना ही होस्टेड चीजें होनी चाहिए एंड उ
उस पर कुछ रैपर्स लिखेंगे इट विल वर्क लाइक अ क्लाउड एंड डू द डिप्लॉयमेंट एग्जीक्यूशन एवरीथिंग सो दैट्स हाउ थिंग्स वर्क इन दी ऑन प्रिमाइस साइड सो इसके भी स्पेसिफिक यूज केसेस है बट एक एक डेफिनेटली गुड कंपेरिजन है बिटवीन दी क्लाउड पार्ट एंड दी ऑन प्रमाइस सो वी विल लुक एट इट सो फर्स्ट इज लोअर आई टी कॉस्ट मीन्स क्लाउड लेट्स यू ऑफ लोड सम और मोस्ट ऑफ दी कॉस्ट एंड एफर्ट ऑफ परचेसिंग इंस्टॉलिंग कॉन्फिगरिंग एंड मैनेजिंग योर ओन ऑन प्रिमाइस इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सो वेन वी टॉक अबाउट दी ऑन प्रिमाइस इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेफिनेटली यू नीड टू टेक केयर दी थिंग्स बाई योर ओन वेदर इट इज अबाउट द परचेजिंग द मशीन and deciding about their configurations and let's say something happens you purchase your machines and after some time you realize no this configuration is not going to work you again need to do the purchasing for the good capacity of uh, hardware and something like that and uh, these are the biggest blocker and lots of manual effort needed in between and these things are actually costly right so configuration part ho gaya cheezo ko manage karne ki baat ho gayi मशीन्स को परचेज करना है या इस तरीके से जितनी भी चीजें हैं ऑन प्रमाइस में हमको करनी पड़ती हैं विच ऑलवेज लाइक इंक्रीजेस दी कॉस्ट जो भी आपकी एक प्रोडक्ट आप बिल्ड कर रहे हो उसकी जो भी कॉस्ट होगी इन्हीं सब चीजों की वजह से काफी ज्यादा इंक्रीज कर जाती है बट वहीं पे अगर हम बात करें क्लाउड पार्ट की सो so जैसा कि आई वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट इन दी प्रीवियस पार्ट दैट इफ यू हैव द क्लाउड सेक्शन देन यू विल बी पेइंग फॉर द time of execution or the thing which you are using for that computation so wohi cheez help karti hai cost ko minimize karne mein if we are going through with the cloud solution so that is the good part aapko configuration ki koi tension nahi leni hai aapko uh, is cheez ki tension nahi leni oh like i think i bought a some uh, wrong hardware or something like that and even its installation part everything is just configurable you just need to pick the things from the like drop down menus according to your use cases and like within fraction of minutes it will be ready for you whatever infrastructure you want for your product next is like improved agility and time to value with cloud your organization can start using enterprise application in minutes instead of waiting weeks or months for it to respond to a request purchase and configure supporting hardware and install softwares cloud also lets you empower certain users specifically developers and data scientists to help themselves to software and support infrastructure so agility and time to value yahan pe iska matlab yahi hai ki jab aap cloud ka use kar rahe ho to aapko apne time and efforts ko waste karne ki need nahi hoti hai in the like infrastructure setup theek hai ki yaar हमको इतना सारा इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बिल्ड करना है वेदर इट इज अबाउट द फिजिकल सर्वर्स और इंस्टॉलिंग द इम्पॉर्टेंट सॉफ्टवेयर्स इन दो सर्वर्स एंड इवन द मैनेजिंग कॉन्फ़िगरेशन पार्ट एवरीथिंग यू डोंट नीड टू वरी अबाउट इट यू ओनली नीड टू स्पेंड योर टाइम फॉर द प्रोडक्टिव थिंग्स मीन्स द प्रोडक्ट यू आर बिल्डिंग जो उसका लॉजिक एंड डेवलपमेंट लेट से बैक एंड उसका पार्ट क्रिएट करना फ्रंट एंड पार्ट क्रिएट करना वॉट एवर इज द मेन कोर लॉजिक फॉर दैट एप्लीकेशन you will be working on that rather than like wasting your time on these things like building up the infrastructure thinking about the cost configuration installation and everything so that's the very very important and very very i would say meaningful point of the cloud because aapki cheezon ko and jo aapki timelines jo aapki deadlines hogi kisi bhi product ko deliver karne ki you can match it very very easily एंड एजाइल डेवलपमेंट की जहाँ पे हम बात कर सकते हैं कि जहाँ पे कॉन्टीन्यूस इंटीग्रेशन होते हैं कॉन्टीन्यूस डेवलपमेंट होते हैं तो अगर हर एक स्प्रिंट में हर एक चीज में हम उन्हीं चीजों पर ज्यादा फोकस करें इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड ऑल ऑब्वियसली वी विल बी इन्वेस्टिंग लेस टाइम ऑन द इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग विच इज लॉजिक डेवलपमेंट नेक्स्ट इज द स्केल मोर इजिली एंड कॉस्ट इफेक्टिवली दिस इज अगेन वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट स्केलेबिलिटी स्केलेबिलिटी मीन्स द टू टाइप ऑफ स्केलेबिलिटी वर्टिकल एंड द हॉरिजोंटल सो so, नॉर्मल जब हम ऑन प्रमाइस की बात करते हैं ऑन प्रमाइस सिस्टम्स की सो so, वहां पर मोस्टली वर्टिकल स्केलिंग ही होती है लाइक like, आपने कोई एक मशीन परचेज कर ली एंड लेट से उसमें अभी जो रैम है वो सिक्सटीन जी बी है एंड धीरे धीरे लोड आपकी मशीन पे बढ़ रहा है नाउ यू आर थिंकिंग दैट हाउ टू इंक्रीज इट्स कैपेसिटी सो दैट और लोड हम हैंडल कर सकें तो हम कॉन्फिग्रेशन चेंजेस कर सकते हैं वो एक्सटर्नल हार्ड डिस्क में भी हो सकता है एंड रैम वगैरह लेट से सिक्सटी फोर वगैरह कर दी सो so, ये तरीके की स्केलिंग जब हम करते हैं सेम मशीन्स पे तो उसको कहते हैं वर्टिकल स्केलिंग बट इसकी भी एक लिमिटेशन है यू कैन नॉट गो बियॉन्ड सर्टेन लिमिट दैट ओके वी वी कैन स्केल दिस मशीन टू लाइक एनी इनफाइनाइट लेवल नो दिस इज 
नॉट डूएबल विद दी ऑन प्रेमाइस सिस्टम एंड हेयर कम्स दी क्लाउड इन पिक्चर आपको कभी भी कुछ भी स्केल करना है अपने सिस्टम को यू कैन जस्ट डू इट इन अ फ्रैक्शन ऑफ सेकेंड्स आपको कुछ भी नहीं करना एक्स्ट्रा मशीन एक्स्ट्रा स्टोरेज जस्ट एक रिक्वेस्ट रेस करनी है एंड उतनी चीज आपको फटाफट अवेलेबल हो जाएगी ठीक है एंड आपके ऊपर लेट से जो एप्लीकेशन आपने बनाई है एंड समटाइम्स वॉट हैपन्स कि अभी तो आपका बिजनेस ग्रो कर रहा है बट लेट से आफ्टर फिफ्टी डेज हंड्रेड डेज आपका बिजनेस इतना ज्यादा ग्रो कर गया कि ट्रैफिक काफी ज्यादा बढ़ गया है वेबसाइट पे या एप्लीकेशन पे तो उसको हैंडल करने के लिए आपको अपने इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर को बड़ा करना पड़ेगा उसको स्केल करना पड़ेगा सो हॉरिजेंटल स्केलिंग इसी को ही बोलते हैं कि जो भी लोअर इन्वायरमेंट या इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर है उसमें किसी भी स्पेसिफिक टाइम पे हम एक्स्ट्रा कॉमोडिटी हार्डवेयर या एक्स्ट्रा जो कॉम्प्यूटेशन है उसको एड कर सकें एंड हमारा जितना भी एप्लीकेशन है स्मूदली एग्जीक्यूट हो सके विदाउट एनी इंटरप्शन सो दैट इज स्केलेबिलिटी एंड इट कैन बी अचीव वेरी वेरी इजिली विद दी क्लाउड पार्ट सो हेयर दिस इज अ वेरी यू कैन से प्रिसाइज पिक्टोरियल रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दी ऑन प्रेमाइस एंड दी क्लाउड पार्ट सो लो हार्डवेयर कॉस्ट एंड हाई मेंटेनेंस कॉस्ट राइट सो दिस इज दी एक्चुअल पार्ट एंड बैकअप एंड रिकवरी कॉस्ट सो दीज थिंग्स आर इन्वॉल्व इन दी ऑन प्रेमाइस की मेंटेनेंस आपको करनी है आपको एक टीम इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर टीम चाहिए जो कि पूरा आपके क्लस्टर्स को आपकी कॉमोडिटी हार्डवेयर को मेंटेन करेगी ठीक है तो उस पर टीम पे इन्वेस्ट करना है सिक्योरिटी कंसर्न काफी ज्यादा होते हैं क्योंकि आपको बहुत एक ब्रेन स्ट्रॉमिंग करनी है उस पर एंड बहुत तरीके की चीजें फॉलो करनी है इन ऑर्डर टू सिक्योर योर सिस्टम ठीक है एंड यू वॉन्ट इवन बिलीव की बहुत सारी कंपनीज में स्पेसिफिक सिक्योरिटी टीम होती है साइबर सिक्योरिटी टीम एंड नॉट इवन साइबर सिक्योरिटी टीम जो भी लाइक like, आईटी टीम होती है जो कि इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पे काम कर रही है उसको बहुत सारा काम करना पड़ता है जब भी भी कोई भी डिप्लॉयमेंट होता है या कोई भी इस तरीके का क्लस्टर प्रिपेयर करते हैं ऑन प्रिमाइस सिस्टम पे तो जब इस तरीके की चीजें होती हैं तो दैट मींस कि वहां पे हमको बहुत ज्यादा इन्वेस्टमेंट करना पड़ता है सिक्योरिटी वाले पार्ट पे एंड स्टिल बहुत सारे लूप होल्स रह जाते हैं जिसकी वजह से प्रॉब्लम आती है हेयर ऑन दी क्लाउड पार्ट जहाँ पे की हमारी जो हार्डवेयर कॉस्ट है वो काफी ज्यादा डेफिनेटली लो होती है आपको उतनी चीज के लिए ही पे कर रहे हैं जहां पे कि आप केवल जो चीजों को यूज कर रहे हो आपको कोई लाइसेंस फी साल भर के लिए पे नहीं करनी है लाइक लैक्स ऑफ मनी यू डोंट नीड टू पे फॉर इट एंड सिक्योरिटी पार्ट दैट इज रियली रियली गुड हेयर चीजें आप लाइक like, सिक्योर बहुत अच्छे लेवल पे कर सकते हो इवन दी क्लाउड सर्विस प्रोवाइडर्स दे यूज टू सेंड द रिकमेंडेशन एंड वो ऑडिट करते रहते हैं आपकी इवन एप्लीकेशन को एंड उनको कहीं पे लगता है कि सिक्योरिटी फ्लो है तो उनकी तरफ से रिकमेंडेशन आते हैं एंड इम्पॉर्टेंट नोटिफिकेशन आते हैं दैट इस तरीके का आपको सिक्योरिटी इम्प्लीमेंटेशन करना है एंड सिक्योरिटी कंप्लाइंस दैट आई वाज टॉकिंग अबाउट कि ये काफी ज्यादा इम्पॉर्टेंट रोल प्ले करता है जब भी आपको सिक्योर करनी चीजें चाहे वो डेटा की बात होगी चाहे जितना भी अक्रॉस दी क्लाउड डेटा ट्रांसफर या जो भी पैकेट्स ट्रांसफर हो रहे हैं वो क्लाउड सर्विस प्रोवाइडर्स इस तरीके से ही उसको डेवलप करते हैं अपनी सर्विसेस को कि इन बिटवीन क्लाउड ट्रांजेक्शन ही काफी ज्यादा सिक्योर होता है एंड बैकअप वगैरह है हर चीज जो डेटा सेंटर से ऐसा नहीं है कि आपने जो चीज डिप्लॉय करी वो एक ही जगह पे अवेलेबल है इट यूज टू गेट रेप्लीकेटेड सो दैट किसी भी टाइम पे कुछ आपको ऐसा एप्लीकेशन टर्म्स में लॉस नहीं हो सकता सो सो फॉर इफ यूर लाइकिंग ऑल दी बेसिक एस्पेक्ट ऑफ क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग देन प्लीज मेक श्योर टू लाइक दिस वीडियो एंड सब्सक्राइब द चैनल नाउ वी विल टॉक अबाउट द डिफरेंट कैटेगराइजेशन ऑफ क्लाउड so in cloud we have actually three kind of categorization first is saas which is software as a service then platform as a service third is infrastructure as a service so first we will look at the saas part so saas it actually means that software as a service ki aap ek jaise cloud service provider ho yahan pe aapne kya kara hai yahan pe ek software hai usi ko hi aapne as a service provide kar rahe ho kisi bhi थर्ड पार्टी को या किसी भी अपने क्लाइंट को ठीक है तो जब इस तरीके की चीजें या इस तरीके की एप्लीकेशंस को हम डिलीवर करते हैं तो वहां पे जो क्लाउड वाला पार्ट है उनको हम सास हिनेबल्ड थिंग्स बोलते हैं या सास प्लेटफॉर्म्स बोलते हैं तो अगर टेक्निकल डेफिनेशंस की बात करें ऑल्सो नोन एज क्लाउड बेस्ड सॉफ्टवेयर और क्लाउड एप्लीकेशन इज एप्लीकेशन सॉफ्टवेयर दैट्स होस्टेड इन दी क्लाउड एंड दैट यू एक्सेस एंड यूज वाया अ वेब ब्राउजर a dedicated desktop client or an api that integrates with your desktop or mobile operating system 
तो यहाँ पे वही मतलब हो गया कि उन्होंने पूरा जो आपका सॉफ्टवेयर है ठीक है वो उनके क्लाउड प्लेटफॉर्म पे होस्टेड है एंड आप बस क्या कर रहे हो आपको प्रॉब्ली एक इंटरफेस प्रोवाइड हो जाएगा एंड प्लेट से कोई एग्जीक्यूटेबल एपीआई हो जाएंगी जो आपको प्रोवाइड हो जाएंगी आप सिर्फ उनको यूज कर रहे हो और वहां पे सब कुछ चीजें आपकी रन हो रही है एंड उस सर्विस को उस सॉफ्टवेयर को ही आप एज अ सर्विस यूज कर पा रहे हो यूजिंग दैट इंटरफेस जो कि प्रॉब्ली क्लाउड डेस्कटॉप के फॉर्मेट में हो सकता है या फिर कोई भी एपीआई के थ्रू आप उस चीज को एक्सेस कर सकते हो तो सॉफ्टवेयर हमारे इसमें पास नहीं है सॉफ्टवेयर क्या है उनका ही बनाया हुआ है क्लाउड सर्विस प्रोवाइडर्स का वो उनके ही एंड पे होस्टेड है दे जस्ट गिवेन यू द इंटरफेस और द एक्सेस सो दैट आप उसको एज अ सर्विस यूज कर पा रहे हो इन मोस्ट केसेस सास यूजर्स पे मंथली और एनुअल सब्सक्रिप्शन फी सम मे ऑफर पे एज यू गो प्राइजिंग बेस्ड ऑन योर एक्चुअल यूजेस तो सेम चीज जो हम बात कर रहे थे कि जितनी देर के लिए जितने टाइम के लिए आप चीजों को यूज करोगे आपको सिर्फ उतना ही पे करना है सेम गोज विद पार्ट सैस इज द प्राइमरी डिलीवरी मॉडल फॉर मोस्ट कॉमर्शियल सॉफ्टवेयर टूडे देर आर हंड्रेड ऑफ थाउजेंड ऑफ सैस सोल्यूशन अवेलेबल फ्रॉम द मोस्ट फोकस्ड इंडस्ट्री एंड डिपार्टमेंटल एप्लीकेशन टू पावरफुल एंटरप्राइज सॉफ्टवेयर डेटा बेस एंड ए आई सॉफ्टवेयर तो जो हम इस तरीके की चीजों की बात करते हैं आज के टाइम में वी हैव लॉट्स ऑफ लॉट्स ऑफ कैटेगराइजेशन लॉट्स ऑफ लॉट्स ऑफ डोमेन्स राइट द ए आई पार्ट एम एल पार्ट एंड द लाइक सॉफ्टवेयर में वी हैव मल्टीपल एप्लीकेशन रिलेटेड टू डिफरेंट डिफरेंट डोमेन्स सो फॉर एन एग्जाम्पल यू आर सम वन दैट आपने कोई अभी एक अपना बिजनेस है कि स्टार्ट करा है ठीक है एंड यू डोंट हैव मच कैपेबिलिटीज और इनफ रिसोर्सेज और इनफ टाइम और मनी टू इन्वेस्ट ऑन कि पूरा इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सही से बिल्ड करें टीम बिल्ड करें एंड हम क्या करें कि फिर अपना प्रोडक्ट एक खुद बनाएं फिर उसको लॉन्च करें ठीक है आपके पास एक बिजनेस आइडिया है एंड यू जस्ट वॉन्ट टू पुट इट इन टू द मार्केट तो उसके लिए बहुत सारे क्लाउड सर्विस प्रोवाइडर्स हैं ठीक है एंड इवन लाइक कंपनीज हैं जो कि इस तरीके के मॉडल्स पे काम कर रहे हैं जहां पे कि वो सॉफ्टवेयर बिल्ड करते हैं एक जेनेरिक सॉफ्टवेयर बनाते हैं एंड या कह लो कि बेस्ड ऑन द क्लाइंट रिक्वायरमेंट दे यूज टू बिल्ड सॉफ्टवेयर ठीक है जो कि उनके एंड पे ही होस्टेड होता है दे एक्चुअली जैसा भी एग्रीमेंट हो क्योंकि अगर एग्रीमेंट है कि हाँ आप, आप सॉफ्टवेयर बिल्ड करके हमें ही दे दो एंड सारा मैनेजमेंट पार्ट हम उसका खुद देखेंगे खुद ही हम डिप्लॉय करेंगे ना आगे की मेंटेनेंस और ये सब कुछ तो वो आप कर सकते हो या जहां पे कि एज अ सॉफ्टवेयर की ठीक है हमको ये सॉफ्टवेयर चाहिए ये हमारी नीड है एंड वी जस्ट वांट टू एक्सेस इट सब कुछ हमारे वाया ही राउट होगा तो वो सब कुछ बिल्ड कर देते हैं सॉफ्टवेयर वगैरह एंड इट विल बी होस्टेड एट देर एंड मेंटेनेंस फर्दर डेवलपमेंट एंड वॉट न्यू थिंग्स जो भी मेंटेनेंस कॉन्फिग्रेशन के पार्ट हैं दे विल टेक केयर ऑफ इट सो दैट्स हाउ दी एक्चुअल सास मॉडल वर्क कि आपने पूरा एक प्रोडक्ट एक एक सॉफ्टवेयर बनाया इट इज होस्टेड एंड द पार्टी इज जस्ट यूजिंग इट सो हेयर यू कैन सी इट राइट आज के टाइम में लाइक चार्ट एप्लीकेशन हो गई या हमारे पास कोई भी ई कॉमर्स एप्लीकेशन हो गई या कह लो कि हमारे पास जैसे वी टॉक अबाउट दी लाइक गूगल डॉक्स सो इट इज वॉट इट इज एक्चुअली अ सर्विस राइट जो कि हमारे पास जैसे हम जीमेल वगैरह यूज करते हैं तो उसके साथ ऑब्वियसली वी कैन यूज इट सो एक एज अ सॉफ्टवेयर ही है जो कि एज अ सर्विस हम यूज कर पा रहे हैं वी हैव द इंटरफेस हम जाके उसको कंज्यूम कर पा रहे हैं हमको अपनी तरफ से कुछ उसको मेंटेन करने की जरूरत नहीं है कि हाँ पहले हमें गूगल डॉक्स इंस्टॉल करना पड़ेगा अपने सिस्टम पे फिर कुछ भी न्यू चीजें होती हैं तो हम ही टेक केयर करनी नो नथिंग लाइक दैट नाउ विल टॉक अबाउट द पैस विच इज प्लेटफॉर्म एज अ सर्विस सो वट डज इट मीन पैस प्रोवाइड सॉफ्टवेयर डेवलपर्स विद ऑन डिमांड प्लेटफॉर्म हार्डवेयर कंप्लीट सॉफ्टवेयर स्टैक इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर और इवन डेवलपमेंट टूल्स फॉर रनिंग डेवलपिंग एंड मैनेजिंग एप्लीकेशन विदाउट दी कॉस्ट कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी एंड इनफ्लेक्सीबिलिटी ऑफ मेंटेनिंग दैट प्लेटफॉर्म ऑन प्रिमाइस सो प्लेटफॉर्म एज अ सर्विस दिस नेम एक्चुअली सजेस्ट और इट एक्चुअली डिफाइंस इट मीनिंग की प्लेटफॉर्म को एज अ सर्विस दे देना ठीक है तो प्लेटफॉर्म की अगर हम बात करें जैसे कि लेट से आपको एक सॉफ्टवेयर डेवलपर हो किसी कंपनी में तो जब भी आप कोई प्रोडक्ट बनाओगे या कोई एक एप्लीकेशन आप बनाओगे तो आपको उसको क्रिएट करने के लिए उसको होस्ट करने के लिए एक पर्टिकुलर प्लेटफॉर्म चाहिए चाहे वो फिजिकल सर्वर्स हो सकते हैं या कोई भी एक आपका कस्टमाइज सॉफ्टवेयर स्टैक हो सकता है विद बिल टूल्स वॉट इट इज तो ये तरीके की चीजें जब आपको चाहिए होती हैं आपके रिक्वायरमेंट के लिए फॉर योर एप्लीकेशन एंड फॉर योर डेवलपमेंट सो दिस इज बीइंग कॉल्ड एज अ प्लेटफॉर्म एज अ सर्विस लाइक दैट क्लाउड सर्
हम आपके लिए इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर हम आपके लिए लेट से सबनेट्स वगैरह या वीपीसी वगैरह है या जो भी डेटा स्टोरेज से रिलेटेड चीजें हैं इस तरीके की चीजें हम आपके लिए रेडी कर देंगे आप उन पे अपना डेवलपमेंट वगैरह आप उन पे अपना जो भी एप्लीकेशन वगैरह बना सकते हो उनकी डेवलपमेंट स्टार्ट कर सकते हो सो वेर एवर दिस काइंड ऑफ यूज केस वी कॉल इट एज अ प्लेटफॉर्म एज अ सर्विस विद पैस द क्लाउड प्रोवाइडर होस्ट एवरीथिंग दैट आई वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट की चाहे वो नेटवर्क की बात हो गई चाहे सर्वर्स की बात हो गई स्टोरेज ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम्स हो गए एंड मिडिलवेयर एंड डेटा बेसिस जो भी इस तरीके की चीजें हो गई वो सारी क्लाउड सर्विस प्रोवाइडर ही होस्ट करता है अपने एंड पे एंड यू डोंट नीड टू वरी अबाउट इट आप बस उसको यूज करते हो एंड अपनी डेवलपमेंट एंड डेवलपमेंट को स्टार्ट करते हो डेवलपर सिंपली पिक फ्रॉम अ मेन्यू टू स्पिन अप सर्वर्स एंड एनवायरमेंट दे नीड टू रन बिल्ड टेस्ट डिप्लॉय मेंटेन अपडेट एंड स्केल एप्लीकेशन सो हेयर लाइक ऑन द क्लाउड साइड इट इज अ जस्ट मैटर ऑफ सेकेंड्स यू जस्ट पिक द थिंग्स विच यू वॉन्ट इन टर्म्स ऑफ लेट से सर्वर्स सर्वर कॉन्फिग्रेशन यू कैन क्विकली प्रोवाइड इवन फॉर द स्टोरेज वॉट एवर यू वॉन्ट वॉट काइंड ऑफ क्वेरी इंजन यू वॉन्ट सो यू कैन जस्ट सिलेक्ट दीज थिंग्स एंड मेक इट रेडी फॉर योर सेल्फ तो जो इस तरीके की चीजें हैं एज अ प्लेटफॉर्म वो सब क्या कर रहा है क्लाउड आपको ही प्रोवाइड कर रहा है होस्टेड उनके एंड पे है आप अपना कोई भी जो एप्लीकेशन डेवलपमेंट है वो उस पर स्टार्ट कर सकते हो सो फॉर एन एग्जाम्पल जब कोई क्लाउड प्लेटफॉर्म हमको इस तरीके की सर्विसेज देता है लाइक ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम ऑन अ सर्वर एंड होस्टिंग पार्ट सिक्योरिटी मैकेनिज्म एंड सिक्योरिटी सर्विसेज कोई इवन सॉफ्टवेयर एंड डेटा बेसिस एंड नेटवर्क एक्सेस राइट सो दिस इज कम्स अंडर द प्लेटफॉर्म एज अ सर्विस सो इट इज डेफिनेटली बिट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दी सॉफ्टवेयर एज अ सर्विस बिकॉज वहां पे कंप्लीट सॉफ्टवेयर हमको मिल रहा था वहां पे वी वर इवन नॉट कंसर्न अबाउट हाउ वी गोना डिप्लॉय हाउ वी गोना क्रिएट एंड पूरा सॉफ्टवेयर के बारे में हमको कुछ भी नहीं सोचना था हमको फॉर एन एग्जाम्पल एक चैट एप्लीकेशन चाहिए वो हमने रिक्वेस्ट करी जिस भी हम वेंडर के साथ में कनेक्टेड हैं उन्होंने वो चैट एप्लीकेशन बनाई सब कुछ उनके एंड पे होस्टेड है दे जस्ट गिवेन यू एंटरफेस कि हाँ आप ऐसे यूज कर लो यहाँ पे इन्होंने क्या कर दिया आपको प्लेटफॉर्म दे दिया जो रिक्वायर्ड चीजें हैं एंड एग्जीक्यूटेबल थिंग्स बनाने के लिए वो इन्होंने आपको प्रोवाइड कर दी बट यहाँ पे एक्चुअल एप्लीकेशन पे बनाने का जो काम है वो हमको ही करना है इसीलिए दिस इज नोन एज द्लेटफॉर्म एज अ सर्विस नाउ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एज अ सर्विस सो आई ए एस प्रोवाइड ऑन डिमांड एक्सेस टू फंडामेंटल कंप्यूटिंग रिसोर्सेज फिजिकल एंड वर्चुअल सर्विस नेटवर्किंग एंड स्टोरेज ओवर द इंटरनेट एज पे एज यू गो बेसिस सो यहां पर इट इज काइंड ऑफ सिमिलर टू दी प्लेटफॉर्म एज अ सर्विस बट कुछ ना कुछ डिफ्रेंसिएशन जरूर हैं जो कि आने वाली स्लाइड्स में मैं बताऊंगा कि इन तीनों में क्या ऐसे एक कोर डिफरेंसेस हैं जिससे कि हम डिफरेंस कर सकते हैं ओके दिस कम्स अंडर द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एज अ सर्विस एंड दिस कम्स अंडर द प्लेटफॉर्म एज अ सर्विस बिकॉज दिस पास पार्ट एंड द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एज अ सर्विस पार्ट इज लिटिल बिट सिमिलर बट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एज अ सर्विस इज अ लाइक मोर ब्रॉडर कंसेप्ट वेयर वी एक्चुअली फोकस ऑन द फिजिकल साइड राइट फिजिकल सर्वर्स फिजिकल स्टोरेज एंड लाइक फिजिकल यू कैन से मशीनरीज एंड हार्डवेयर साइड राइट दीज काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स विल बी लाइक कमिंग अंडर इन टू द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एज अ सर्विस पार्ट सो आई ए एस इनेबल्स एंड यूजर्स टू स्केल एंड श्रिंक रिसोर्सेज एज नीडेड बेसिस रिड्यूसिंग द नीड फॉर हाई अपफ्रंट कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर्स और अननेसेसरी ऑन प्रिमाइसिस और ओन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड फॉर ओवर बाइंग रिसोर्सेज टू एकोमोडेट पीरियोडिक स्पाइक्स इन यूजेज सो यहाँ पे इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर की जो बात होगी तो इसको हम इस तरीके से और बोल सकते हैं कि जब हम ऑन प्रिमाइसिस की बात करते थे तो वहां पर हमने इस चीज की बात करी थी कि हमको सब कुछ खुद ही लेके आना है ठीक है हमको मशीन जो परचेसेस करनी है उनके कॉन्फ़िगरेशन इंस्टॉलेशन इन सबको हमें ही टेक कर करना पड़ता था ठीक है सो so, यहाँ पे जितना भी फिजिकल रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट वाली बात होगी वो क्लाउड सर्विस प्रोवाइडर है वो ही इस चीज को इनेबल करता है एंड इट एक्चुअली हमारे जो बर्डन है उसको रिड्यूस कर देता है काफी एक लिमिट तक जहां पर कि हमको हार्डवेयर और फिजिकल रिसोर्सेस के बारे में इतना सोचने की नीड नहीं है इन कंट्रास्ट टू सैस एंड पैस एंड इवन न्यूअर पैस कंप्यूटिंग मॉडल सच एज कंटेनर्स एंड सर्वरलेस जैसे कि हम बात कर रहे थे कि जो कंटेनर्स हो गए या सर्वरलेस कंप्यूटेशन सर्विसेज होगी दीज एक्चुअली कम्स अंडर दी पैस पार्ट 
Infrastructure as a service provides the user with the lowest level control of computing resources in the cloud. So that is what I was talking about. कि पास जो हो गया वो एज अ प्लेटफॉर्म हो गया कि वहां पे एक प्लेटफॉर्म उन्होंने आपको होस्ट करके एक दे दिया दिस इज समथिंग राइट बेस्ड ऑन आवर एनालिसिस एंड बेस्ड ऑन योर यूजर रिक्वायरमेंट दिस कुड बी अ प्लेटफॉर्म और द रिक्वायर्ड थिंग्स विच यू नीड टू डेवलप योर थिंग्स एंड यू कैन जस्ट यूज इट एंड यू कैन जस्ट ट्राई टू डिप्लॉय एंड डेवलप योर थिंग्स बट जहां पर कि आपको और एकदम लोअर लेवल पे कि नहीं हम खुद ही सर्वर फिजिकल सर्वर्स या उनकी जितनी भी कंप्यूटेशन या कुछ भी कॉन्फ़िगरेशन रिलेटेड चीजें उन पे हमको कंट्रोल चाहिए एंड उस तरीके की जब हमको सर्विस प्रोवाइड करता है कोई भी क्लाउड सर्विस प्रोवाइडर सो वी कॉल इट एज अ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एज अ सर्विस तो यहाँ पे अगर डायग्राम में देखें तो चाहे वो स्टोरेज की बात होगी डेटा सेंटर्स की बात होगी शार्डेड रिसोर्सेज फायर वॉल्स होस्टिंग प्लेटफॉर्म्स या कुछ भी इस तरीके का चाहिए सो so, यहाँ पे हम खुद देख सकते हैं कि हमें काफी लोअर लेवल पे भी एक्सेसिबल चीजें हैं जिनको कि हम मैनेज कर सकते हैं सो दैट एक्चुअली कम्स अंडर द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एज अ सर्विस सो इट इज डेफिनेटली डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दी लाइक पास एंड सास पार्ट Now we will look at it. Who manages what? So this is actually important to know. So here, whatever is in the green color, that means we or the client will itself manage these things. Whatever is in the blue, that means it will be managed by the provider or the cloud service provider. So if you have like traditional IT, or if you are talking about the on-premises part, so on-premises means everything is going to be taken care by you or the client or the third party itself uh, whether it is the application like development deployment anything data runtime os virtualization servers storage networking party will be the owner of it and they will be managing it now if i talk about the infrastructure as a service so here applications like that will be taken care by the client itself data same and runtime middleware these are the important things which doesn't come under the infrastructure as a service part and will be taken care by the client itself now talking about the operating systems right virtualization physical servers storage networking like creating the subnets vpc domains dns these things so that comes under the infrastructure as a service and jahan pe ki humko in cheezon pe zyada control chahiye hota hai तो हम ये सारी चीजें वहां पे मैनेज करते हैं खुद ही एंड और जो क्लाउड सर्विस प्रोवाइडर है वो इन सब चीजों को हमको एज अ सर्विस प्रोवाइड करता है एंड वी एक्चुअली गेट दी मोर कंट्रोल हमें कंट्रोल मिल जाता है क्योंकि हम एज अ सर्विस ले रहे हैं उस इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर को वहां पे हमारा ऐसी कोई भी डील नहीं है कि ठीक है आप ही इस चीज को मैनेज करो हम ज्यादा उस पर कंट्रोल नहीं चाहते हैं नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट द प्लेटफॉर्म एज अ सर्विस so like data part and the application obviously like it will be managed by uh, you kyunki yahan pe jaisa maine bataya tha ki platform humko mil gaya hai ab humko kya karna hai development apni start karni hai and apna actual applications ko create karna hai wahan pe now run time whatever would be the run time middleware what are the layers and the operating system virtualization servers storage networking these things will be taken care of by the cloud service provider so here you can see this difference right the run time part and the middle where part uh, this is something which is like not provided by the infrastructure or not provided as the infrastructure as a service so we can skip this serverless part this is saas it is important so here everything you can see right is blue or it is actually managed by the cloud service provider so कंप्लीट सॉफ्टवेयर सब कुछ उन्होंने बना दिया आपको कोई भी टेंशन लेने की जरूरत नहीं है एवरीथिंग इज लाइक रेडीमेड फॉर यू यू जस्ट गो टू द मार्केट एंड बाय द थिंग लाइक यू जस्ट एंटर इनटू अ शॉप दैट शॉप इज काइंड ऑफ इंटरफेस और इवन लेट्स से एन एनी ई कॉमर्स प्लेटफॉर्म यू जस्ट यूज इट यू जस्ट बाय द क्लोथ ऑफ योर फिटिंग समथिंग लाइक दैट सो सब कुछ बना बनाया है आपको बस कंज्यूम करना सो दैट कम्स अंडर दी सैस प्लेटफॉर्म जहां पे कि हमको नेसेसरी चीजें चाहिए डेवलपमेंट के लिए अपनी एप्लीकेशन को डेवलप करने के लिए विद लेस कंट्रोल नॉट ऑन दी लाइक फिजिकल साइट दैट विल बी लाइक अंडर दी प्लेटफॉर्म एज अ सर्विस बट वेयर वी आर मोर कंसर्न टू वर्ड दी फिजिकल साइड ऑफ द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड वी आर यूजिंग दो सर्विसेज विद मोर कंट्रोल दैट कम्स अंडर दी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एज अ सर्विस सो सो फॉर इफ यू आर लाइकिंग ऑल दी बेसिक एस्पेक्ट ऑफ क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग देन प्लीज मेक श्योर टू लाइक दिस वीडियो एंड सब्सक्राइब द चैनल 
नाउ क्लाउड यूज केसेस वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट दी यूज केसेस कि कहां पे हम देख सकते हैं कि हां एक्चुअल में क्लाउड का यूज हो रहा है विद 25 परसेंट ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन प्लानिंग टू मूव ऑल देयर एप्लीकेशन टू क्लाउड विद इन दी नेक्स्ट ईयर मीन्स दिस इज एक्चुअली गोइंग ऑन एंड कंपनीज आर वर्किंग रियली हार्ड ऑन इट टू मूव मोस्ट ऑफ द थिंग्स फ्रॉम दी ऑन प्रोमाइस टू दी क्लाउड पार्ट it would seem that cloud computing use cases are limitless and that's true like whatever you can imagine nowadays and uh, you think is executable and the component which is actually required for that product mostly will be available on the cloud side and you can use it and you can make your product as a cloud agnostic solution but even for cloud companies not planning a wholesale shift to the cloud certain initiatives and cloud computing are a match made in it heaven that is true like whatever we'll be talking about the next we actually call it as a like match made in heaven ki ha ye use case specifically cloud ke liye hi bana hai anything that involves storing and processing huge volume of data at high speeds and require more storage and computing capacity than most organization can or want to purchase and deploy on premises so jahan bhi is tarike ki use cases honge where you need high data computation uh, techniques and uh, like high volume storage services so jahan pe bhi is tarike ke use cases honge cloud will come into the picture kyunki ye cheeze aisi hain jinko ek organization ek limit tak hi maintain kar sakti hai right ek bahut massive scale pe agar hum isko maintain karne jayenge so it is going to be difficult in terms of the maintenance security and in terms of the cost सो so, जहां पे भी इस तरीके की यूज केस आपके सामने आ गया डेफिनेटली वी कैन ट्राई टू पिक फॉर द क्लाउड एज अ ऑप्शन सो द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड मोस्ट पॉपुलर यूज केस नाउ इज द बिग डेटा एनालिटिक्स राइट सो बिग डेटा एनालिटिक्स इवन आई एम अ डेटा इंजीनियर सो आई नो हाउ एक्सटेंसिवली आई बीन यूजिंग द क्लाउड सर्विसेज फॉर एनी बिग डेटा सोल्यूशन सो दिस इज समथिंग वी डोंट डू ऑन दी ऑन प्रोमाइस साइड रेगुलरली we have like amazing amazing services provided by the different cloud providers in order to make good like big data solution for any of the use case so agar hum baat kare ki humko koi like distributed storage service chahiye to cloud providers ne wo bhi de rakhi hain agar hame koi transactional database chahiye and no sql database chahiye csps like the cloud service providers have these things as well and even if we want distributed computation engine they have well managed and curated services which is kind of wrapper with all the open source frameworks which is actually being used as a distributed computation engine and you don't need to worry about how i'm going to install the things because how i started in the beginning like i was just doing whole setup on the machines even on a very mini cluster kind of thing i found it really challenging but when you work on these cloud services you actually mean your time whatever time you have you mostly invest it for the actual development rather than like hustling through the uh, setup part and the installation part next is the internet of thing like iot so iot is something let's say i have my mobile phone and whatever is being tracked not only mobile phone or any device right jahan pe ki cheezon ko hum collect kar sakte hain jahan pe hum data connect kar sakte hain chahe smart tvs ho gaye एंड स्मार्ट डिवाइसेज हो गई सो इनमें हो क्या रहा है कि जो भी चीजें हैं वो ऑपरेट हो रही है क्लाउड पे ही वो चीजें होस्टेड है आपके पास क्या है आपके पास सिंपली मशीन पे वो चीजें लेट से स्मार्ट वॉच है आप सब चीजें उस पर एक्सेस कर पा रहे हो तो कैसे हो पा रही है दैट इज बेसिकली जो सर्विसेज परफॉर्म हो रही है वो क्लाउड पे ही एग्जीक्यूट हो रही है वहां से ही एक्सेसिबल हो रही है तो इंटरनेट ऑफ द थिंग इज डेफिनेटली अ वेरी वेरी गुड यूज केस फॉर दी क्लाउड पार्ट next is the artificial intelligence particularly machine learning and deep learning applications actually these applications are something which actually needs very high computation uh, thing right whether like the high data volume and in terms of the computation because these algorithms are pretty complex and they work on a heavy data and they actually need a good computation power in order to process that complex model on a high volume of data so that's why like doing these things in the on premises part is going to be really difficult and cloud is the best fit for the ai kind of applications for development teams adopting agile or devops 
to streamline development cloud offers the on demand end user self service that keeps operations task such as spinning up development and test servers from becoming development bottlenecks so cloud jo ek use case ki hum yahan pe baat kar rahe hain ki kahan pe aur best fit ho sakta hai so cloud एक ऐसी चीज होगी जो कि ये सारे बॉटलनेक्स जो हैं इनसे आपको बहुत ही दूर कर देता है तो आप ऐसा यूज को खुद ही सोच सकते हो कि आप एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हो एंड आप इन सब चीजों में अपना टाइम वेस्ट नहीं करना चाहते लाइक कि कैसे सर्वर सेटअप करना है एंड कैसे मशीन्स लेके आनी है कैसे सब कुछ एक क्लस्टर को क्रिएट करना है वॉट इट इज इफ यू जस्ट वॉन्ट टू गेट अवे फ्रॉम इट दिस इज गोइंग टू बी दी बेस्ट वन लाइक क्लाउड इज दी ऑसम वन एंड I think you can even see how it is being used. These are the simple use cases, but like any of the massive platform you talk about nowadays, let's say any streaming platform or any big e-commerce application, so they are definitely running on the cloud side because they are serving to millions of customers. And if you work with the millions of customers, and if you serve your things to the millions of customers. that means you probably cannot handle these things with the on premises part you definitely need the cloud for the lower cost for better security for better backup and for the best user experience with scalability because wahan pe cheeze jo hoti hain 24 into 7 up hoti hi hoti hain high availability cloud service providers hamesha provide karte hain apni services ke sath mein so here you can see in this diagram like this is our cloud service provider and we will be getting everything whether like the service infrastructure and uh, like the platform big data analytics and everything like just running and evolving around the cloud and cloud service providers are someone who is the owner of it and they are providing all these best and super important services to run our business and to run our applications smoothly Now we will be talking about the cloud computing characteristics. So self-service provisioning and user can spin up compute resources for almost any type of workload on demand. That means कि आपको किसी भी time पे जो भी scale करनी है अपनी चीजों की horizontal scalability just based on your requirement. Ah, uh, you just need fraction of seconds to spin up your things like self-service. आपको जब जैसे जो भी चाहिए आप क्या कर सकते हो वो चीजें ले सकते हो क्लाउड सर्विस प्रोवाइडर से जितने टाइम के लिए आप यूज करोगे यू ओनली नीड टू पे फॉर दैट इलास्टिसिटी कंपनीज कैन फ्रीली स्केल अप एज अ कंप्यूटिंग नीड्स इन इंक्रीज एंड स्केल डाउन अगेन एज डिमांड डिक्रीज कि अगर आपकी ऐसा नहीं है कि हम स्केलेबिलिटी की बात करें सो वी कैन ओनली इंक्रीज और वी कैन ओनली इंक्रीज दी कैपेसिटी वेन यू थिंक दैट ओके लेट से फॉर कपल ऑफ मंथ माई बिजनेस वुड बी लाइक समथिंग लाइक हॉल्टेड और यू विल बी और यू थिंक लाइक देर विल बी लेस इंट्रैक्शन फ्रॉम द कस्टमर साइड ऑन द प्लेटफॉर्म सो ऑब्वियसली ड्यूरिंग दैट पीरियड यू डोंट नीड द बिग क्लस्टर और यू डोंट नीड लाइक लॉट्स ऑफ कॉमोडिटी हार्डवेयर इन ऑर्डर टू हैंडल दैट स्केल सो इफ यू नो इट देन डेफिनेटली यू कैन लाइक रिड्यूस द कॉस्ट यू कैन इवन सेव सम कॉस्ट एंड हाउ यू कैन डू इट यू कैन जस्ट इवन डिक्रीज द क्लस्टर साइज सो दैट्स वाई हेयर इलास्टिसिटी लाइक इवन यू कैन इंक्रीज इट यू कैन डिक्रीज इट सो जब भी भी जैसी भी नीड है अगर आपको बेस्ट कस्टमर एक्सपीरियंस देना है एंड अवेलेबिलिटी या इस तरीके की चीजें चाहिए एंड एप्लीकेशन पे लोड बहुत ज्यादा है वी कैन स्केल इट हॉरिजोंटली एंड जब आपको लगता है कि हाँ आपको इस टाइम के लिए चीजें मिनिमल रहेंगी एंड इम्पैक्ट उतना नहीं होगा यू कैन लाइक जस्ट स्केल इट डाउन कि हाँ इतना मिनिमाइज कर देंगे सो दैट रेस्ट ऑफ द चीजों के लिए मेंटेनेंस या रेस्ट ऑफ द चीजों के लिए कॉस्ट हमको पे नहीं करनी है नाउ पेपर यूज सो यहाँ पे जितना भी जो चीजें हम यूज करेंगे जितनी देर के लिए यूज करेंगे वी ओनली नीड टू पे फॉर दैट वी डोंट नीड टू वरी अबाउट हैवी लाइसेंसिंग फी और समथिंग लाइक दैट Workload resilience. Cloud service providers often implement redundant resources to ensure resilient storage and keep users' important workload running, often across multiple global regions. So that is actually very very important, and that's how cloud service providers actually guarantees for the high availability and like zero data loss part. Because whenever you host your solution onto the cloud part, they actually try to create its uh, multiple copies into different regions. Because let's say somehow same thing is replicated in same region and something happens with the data center 
विच इज स्पेसिफिक टू अ रीजन ऑल द थिंग्स विल बी वैन इज राइट बट इफ वन ऑफ द रेप्लीकेशन इज मेड इन टू अ डिफरेंट रीजन सो लेट से दिस रीजन डेटा सेंटर इज डाउन दे कैन डेफिनेटली पॉइंटेड टू दैट वन सो दैट यूर सर्विस इज अप एंड रनिंग एंड सेम गोज विद द डेटा स्टोरेज पार्ट दे यूज टू क्रिएट मल्टीपल कॉपीज ऑफ इट एंड इन द डिफरेंट रीजन सो दैट लाइक एट एनी पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम यू आर नॉट लूजिंग योर इंपॉर्टेंट डेटा माइग्रेशन फ्लेक्सीबिलिटी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कैन मूव सर्टन वर्कलोड टू और फ्रॉम द क्लाउड और टू डिफरेंट क्लाउड प्लेटफॉर्म्स एज डिजायर्ड और ऑटोमेटिकली फॉर बेटर कॉस्ट सेविंग्स और to use new services as they emerge so migration flexibility is also very very important characteristic ki aapko kabhi bhi koi cheez migrate karni hai from one platform to another platform and even one cloud provider to another or even let's say on premises to the cloud parts so the access of those services is quite easy like they have created apis and application programming interfaces which you can actually use uh, from your application and things will be smoothly deployed to the cloud part broad network access a user can access cloud data or upload data to the cloud from anywhere with an internet connection and using any device so that's the important thing it is a uh, very very easily accessible but when you talk about the on premises so if the public access is not definitely not given then prop the you have to be in the uh, same network of your company and then you will be able to access those on premises thing multi tenancy and resource pooling multi tenancy lets numerous customers share the same physical infrastructure of the same applications yet still retain privacy and security over their own data so this is really great part i mean when you talk about a cloud service provider so don't think that they have one let's say you ask for two or three servers and this is the server which is actually dedicated to you no it's actually not like that so the way they are using it like it is the back end part is definitely quite complex but the way they are managing it whatever the infrastructure they have at a time they are serving multiple users and multiple customers probably things will be shared right let's say the infrastructure or let's say the commodity hardwares will be shared but privacy is maintained things are isolated right so let's say this piece which is being hosted or which is being owned by a customer x so only you will be able to access it and same goes with the y and although we know the infrastructure is shared here so that's how the resource pooling and multi tenancy work with the cloud and it is the a great way to create being a cloud service provider this is the most optimized way in order to serve multiple customers with like limited infrastructures or the available infrastructures cloud features and characteristics which are definitely listed here automation and orchestration cost of management performance monitoring governance and compliance security everything is provided by the cloud providers so whole and soul you can say you don't need to worry about each and every thing whether it is the monitoring part okay let's say i have the cluster in the on premises system i need to create some matrices so that i can keep an eye on the cluster okay when it is breaching the maximum cpu utilization so that we can look at the heavy computation processing and all this is part performance monitoring so we can set the alarms and orchestration tool bhi hamare paas provided hote hain and bahut sari important services jo ki ek स्मूथ यूजर एक्सपीरियंस प्रोवाइड करते हैं एंड बहुत कुछ मेंटेन कर लेते हैं अपने ही एंड पे जहां पे कि आपको अपने मैनुअल एफर्ट्स नहीं लगाने यू जस्ट नीड टू वैल्यू योर टाइम फॉर द एक्चुअल डेवलपमेंट एंड यू एक्चुअली नीड टू थिंक अबाउट योर एक्चुअल प्रोडक्ट आइडिया सो सो फार इफ यू आर लाइकिंग ऑल द बेसिक एस्पेक्ट ऑफ क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग देन प्लीज मेक श्योर टू लाइक दिस वीडियो एंड सब्सक्राइब द चैनल नाउ विच आर द बिग क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग कंपनीज सो वी विल टॉक अबाउट दिस वन that nowadays what kind of cloud service providers in the market and based on their market cap and share which one is more popular so here you can see this presentation so here based on the market cap definitely aws which is actually created by the amazon this is most demanding one and most of the companies are using services from the aws and then we have microsoft they have 
their cloud platform named as Microsoft Azure and then they have the IBM IBM they have their own cloud platform like IBM cloud and we have the Google uh, who is also have built a cloud platform which is named as GCP Google cloud platform like whatever services you need uh, you can even use AWS you can use Microsoft Azure you can use IBM you can use uh, Google GCP next 10 I mean these are the some uh, important like companies somehow they have created their own cloud part and they are also working as a cloud service providers for like certain uh, business use cases and like few of the companies are using them as a cloud service provider so we have like Alibaba, Fujitsu, Entity, Oracle and Rackspace, Salesforce and many more rest of the market combine this percentage of share so overall we can definitely say the biggest part which is actually acquired by the Amazon like the AWS side and that is the most popular one and even for me like it's been almost a four years I have been working with the AWS more closely for the big data solutions yep so that was all about the cloud computing part I hope you would have enjoyed this session and uh, after watching this video at least on a higher level you would be able to understand about the basic aspects of cloud computing what are the different categorization whether it is software as a service platform as a service infrastructure as a service what are the characteristics different use cases and now you can even understand the importance of the cloud computing so after watching this video definitely you should actually target any of the cloud service provider and just start looking at it how you can work on the cloud uh, services nowadays it is a very very important skill set required for any of the development profile so it will definitely add a big big plus in your resume and in your skill set and it will even help you to become a good developer as well so if you like this entire presentation for the cloud computing then definitely like this video and if you have any queries and any thoughts related to the cloud computing part please put it in the comment section we will address all the queries and comments and if you want more content like this then definitely make sure to subscribe the channel and press the notification icon so that you are updated with all the latest videos on this platform so i will see you guys in the next video till then just stay safe today we will talk about microsoft azure a cloud-based computing platform that provides a comprehensive solution for all your app development services. Let's say you are a developer with a fantastic idea for an application that you know will be a success. But for that to happen, you need to have access to servers, developing sources and a vast database. Additionally, you will need to have a dedicated team with a networking solution. Otherwise, you won't be able to release your product to the world. Therefore, the entire concept and the effort remains redundant. With the Azure Cloud Computing Platform, you can have your workstation at your fingertips. If you do not know about Azure, don't worry. This video will cover the basic features of Azure and the benefits and flaws of the platform. But before we begin, let's talk about what exactly Azure is apart from the fact that Microsoft owns it. Primarily, Azure is a cloud computing platform that enables users to access their work from any part of the world as long as they have internet connection. Azure helps you manage your work and allows you to spend some time with your loved ones. The foundation of this platform is cloud-based. Therefore, the platforms come with many features that provide an edge over other similar services. The platform is inbuilt with IS, PaaS, and SaaS, enabling consumers to have access to the computer computing, virtual interaction, and networking. Additionally, Azure also provides a vast ways to store that data. Let's say you are working from home. Whether your workstation is virtually connected to the basic server of your enterprise, but for communication is through their phone and whatever updates you are making in your system needs to be reported via calls. With Azure, your enterprise will have all your updates within one platform, thus eliminating the hours of talking over the phones. Moreover, the platforms come with huge space storage services. Thus, 
Not only that your data is safe, but you would also have access to millions of data without causing a lag in your device. What is the goal behind this video? This video aims to give you a complete idea of what you might face when installing the software. Cloud computing and learning how to develop apps and websites are becoming a requirement. Additionally, it provides a platform where you can get the most needed components to grant a successful application. Nonetheless, being a developer is a requirement to understand the wants and needs of your application. Inclusive to that, one has to have the mentality or ability to develop different ideas that will improve the app even more. To understand that, first you need to learn whatever there is to turn your idea into reality. This is when Azure comes into the rescue by helping you understand coding and other languages. Many students and professors among other professors require virtual communication these days. Accessing someone in person is getting difficult by the minute. College students rarely have the mentality to come to college to study. Most of them are building relationships among other things. College is the time to make memories and while studying is a significant part of it. Students often seem to take it lightly. But what if there was software that would enable them to access their classrooms without leaving the bed? With Azure, that dream comes true. This video is to help throw light on its brilliant features that have proven to be helpful in the past. Azure has many benefits that make complete software for all your cloud computing problems when compiled together. Another factor is that the process is really easy to learn and follow. So you will not have any issues concerning the education process. Once you have managed to do it, the rest of it will be as smooth as butter. Azure comes with a comprehensive set of development tools that could be used by students, teachers and professionals. Many teachers have benefited from using the Azure platform. Students get a year of Azure access for free which opens new doors for attaining a new degree concerning development tools and STEM. What is STEM? It is short for Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics. What makes Azure different? Numerous platforms in the world offer similar services. But what makes Azure so preferred by the crowd is the additional benefits it provides concerning data security. Moreover, it is flexible to use and comes with inbuilt integration. Its ability to create a backup in any language is also an example of its intrinsic flexibility. Azure's backup supports almost all language and operating systems. Here are some of the reasons apart from the flexibility that has made Azure so famous. Cost management. The platform runs on SaaS. What is SaaS? It is a short for software as a service. The platform replaces human efforts and minimizes manual work. It has automated functions and is based on the cloud which make it accessible to everyone. It also comes with ICE and PaaS, short for infrastructure and platform as a service respectively. Since it is a cloud-based platform, it can monitor, optimize and distribute your work credentials. Thus, you have a lot of time and energy to do the same through different platforms. Its integrated solution helps to reduce high cost. The platform comes with a pricing calculator that allows you to compare the amount of money you are investing at your on-site setup with the amount required to pay for the entire Azure setup. The calculator shows the cost concerning the computing and maintenance of the network with the database analytics which also includes the development tools. Comprehensive mobile and website app development. A great factor of the Azure University is that it has a single platform for website and mobile application development. The Azure application includes patch management, integration and auto scale. What are these? You may ask. Patch management 
helps you to manage your time and resources and thus helps in your work efficiency. Auto scale is another functionality that adjusts your resource management with a web traffic. It analyzes the web and produces a complete report on web traffic updates. You can link this feature to both employees and managers location through a secure system. Safe connectivity. Azure comes with an integrated directory that allows you to reach out of the world safely. The core management and the security system makes it safe to assess the world virtually without any fear of being hacked. This is a special aspect of Azure that cannot be found in most app developing platforms. What's more, a centralized tool management software on the Azure platform also makes your on-premise apps like Microsoft 365 cohesive. Vast resources. Azure is a platform by Microsoft, which means it has access to a vast library. You can use Azure Resource Manager, which would help you track your resources and separate them into compartments. Along with IaaS, SaaS or PaaS platforms, Azure has also room for every other platform. You can have control over the working process and monitor them as well. Backup and recovery of data. Imagine having a stack of tapes that are cluttering up all the space in your room. Having cloud-based solution like Azure provides a fantastic approach to declutter. Azure has massive storage that enables you to upload and store as much as you want without the fear of losing your data. Moreover, the platform comes with integrated backup scalability that require minimum on-site upkeep. The platform uploads three different versions of data in three specific locations, making it hard to lose your data. Innovation with Azure. The world is ever-changing and to match that pace, we need to develop constantly. Azure has the flexibility and scalability to make that development towards IoT solution in motion. All you need to do is pair your devices to the cloud. It is a conglomerate of your existing infrastructure and the new data from your company. However, if you are worried about your privacy, the platform is constantly monitored to find and fix gaps in the firewall. Azure also provides predictive maintenance and completed analytic reports regularly. Development Tools on Azure This area is specifically designed for students and teachers. It is an operational platform that provides a virtual connection between the two. It is a Microsoft project that provides access to a huge library of resources across 140 countries. It is available to verified university students and professors. The minute you subscribe to this platform, you can access tools mostly used in science and technology. Additionally, engineering is a part of it. Along with STEM programs and math, some of the development tools available on Azure are BizTalk Server, Agent for Visual Studio, Advanced Threat Analytics, Azure DevOps Server, Visual Studio Community, Visual Studio Code, SQL Server Web, System Center. Advantages of using the Azure platform. Now that we all have established the basic principles of Azure, let's talk about how it can benefit you on an enterprise level and as an individual. Did you know that 90% of Fortune's top 500 companies are using Azure? It has grown its user base over time due to some of the following advantages. Compatibility of IaaS, PaaS and SaaS. Azure is a comprehensive platform that offers a complete set of services to enable your infrastructure into outsourcing. It includes the working functions of PaaS, SaaS and IaaS in a comprehensive setup that allows you to access whatever you want within the same platform. Security Azure uses the leading industry security feature. The main aim is to ensure the safety and security of the private data and other services on the cloud. Thus, Microsoft provides a guarantee concerning data privacy on this cloud-based platform. Disadvantages of Azure Like everything in the world, 
Azure also have some flaws. Let us talk about what are the things that are the black spots in otherwise the perfect platform. There are some things that a cloud computing platform cannot perform. Since data privacy is a big deal, screenshots are practically forbidden. But that's just the gist of it. Next mention are some disadvantages that comes with Azure. No screenshots. If you have used VMware, Hyper-V or other similar visualization solutions, taking screenshots over VMS or virtual machines is what you may be accustomed to. However, taking screenshots is not possible on the Azure platform. Inability to upload custom images, unlike Hyper-V, you cannot upload custom images in ISO format and install them in a VM. Some images may upload, but the larger files do not get uploaded at a good speed. However, images that can run in a VM can still be uploaded. Provisioning VMS in the cloud takes a longer time. While Azure does not cost a fortune, it is still smart to save as much money as you can. One quick trick is to deallocate the Azure fabric when it is not in use. But the problem is that even though it saves money, it is time consuming. This is because the next time you turn on your virtual machine, it will take a lot of time to start. Regardless of that, Azure has been doing wonders for the consumers. Many people have started their satisfaction with Azure and have praised its ease of the use. Key takeaways. Cloud computing is widely being accepted by the crowd nowadays. To sum up, the cloud-based platform Azure helps save time and energy and comes with massive storage. The platform is an integrated system wherein you can exercise control over everything related to a website or application development. Even though it has some flaws, it makes up for most of it by quality and execution. Moreover, it is a safe and secure platform with an automated scanner for threats and breaches. Thus, ensuring that whatever you share with the cloud remains with it. Additionally, you will be able to stay in touch with your work and be with your special ones simultaneously. It is also a good investment and has automated functionalities. Even though it has some dysfunctions, it comes with many features that make up for it. If you found this overview on Azure helpful, press the bell icon and subscribe to the Scalar channel to stay up to date with more informative videos. Hey guys, welcome to the Azure Fundamental session. So in this particular session, we're going to learn the basics of Azure. We're going to learn what is Azure. We're going to learn why do you need to use Azure and the basic integral services. I'm Cody Shuren and I'll be taking you through this entire session where we'll understand Azure comprehensively. And also it's a basic session so that you get your basics right. Later, we will also have bigger tutorials on Azure. Okay, so now before moving on with this particular session, make sure that you subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our upcoming videos. And also, if you enjoy our content, please leave a like. And if you have any queries, please leave a comment down below and we would be addressing all of your questions. So now without any further delays, let's begin with the session. So guys, let's start by understanding what is cloud computing before we move on to understand what is Azure. And also, if you want to learn more about cloud computing, you can check out the beginner cloud computing video, which is already available in our Scalar channel. It would give you more insights about cloud computing. And then you can come up to this video and learn about Azure. Okay, but I'll still give you a brief about what is cloud computing. So cloud computing is the on-demand delivery of IT resources over the internet with pay-as-you-go pricing. So this particular sentence summarizes it. So cloud computing is a service which provides you IT resources over the internet. That basically means you can access a server, you can access a database server, you can access storage, you can access uh, different kinds of infrastructural components. So directly from the internet, you don't have to do anything else. You just need a system which is connected to the internet and that's more than enough. You can connect to uh, whatever cloud provider you need and then you can also use the pay as you go pricing model, which basically is much easier than the other types of pricing models. Pay as you go, make sure that you only pay for what you use. For example, let's say you're using two servers for 
two hours you only pay for that two hours you do not pay for creating the service you do not pay for deleting the service or you do not pay for maintaining the service you just pay for the usage of two hours let's say if it is an uh, on premises data center in which you are launching two servers in that case you will have to pay for everything right you will have to pay for the maintenance of the data center you will have to pay for the internet you will have to pay for the uh, creation of those uh, resources you will have to pay for the professionals who are handling the data center that is networking engineers uh, security professionals and all that okay so that's what cloud computing comes in to uh, resolve off so to make the uh, costs much lesser and the process even faster and instead of buying owning and maintaining a physical data center completely you can basically access all of these technology services such as computing power storage and databases over the cloud you don't have to do anything else you just have to sign up with one of the cloud providers you like like azure and then you can start using it and over here this image again summarizes it cloud computing via the internet you can access all of their various different types of cloud computing services which has a big range so networking software application security data storage and business intelligence coming to the main topic which is what is azure so azure is a complete cloud platform so if you know what is cloud computing you would know what azure is because azure is a platform which provides cloud computing services that's it so like azure there are other services there is aws there is gcp there is ibm cloud there is ali cloud there are so many other services but azure is one of the major cloud players so it's basically the second top cloud player according to the public cloud market share number one is aws second comes azure but azure is the fastest growing cloud network right now even though aws is in the number one position but comparing the rate of growth azure has a much bigger growth and also again it helps you host your existing applications you can streamline new application development you can create your application in order to host it to the azure environment and azure can even enhance on premises applications if you have an on premises application you can create an integration to a certain azure service whatever service you like let's say you are uh, you want to create an architecture like this you want the front end to be available on the cloud but you do not want the back end code that is the business logic and the database to be available on the cloud you want it to be available in your data center so that it will be safer for you because those are mission critical code and data so now you can basically create this integration really easily the front end can be in azure and you can create this integration from front end to back end very easily using azure services which are already available so azure integrates the cloud services that you need to develop test deploy and manage your applications all of which while you are advantaging of cloud computing benefits okay so this is basically what azure is it's a cloud provider which provides various types of cloud services via the internet it is owned by microsoft and also azure was launched in the year 2010 like aws was launched in 2006 it took four years for microsoft to launch their own cloud service so that four years basically put aws at an advantage so that that's why they are the number one because within that four years they advanced a lot okay okay coming to the next one so azure provides cloud-based compute offerings so they provide various types of services which we'll be looking at but compute offerings are the most common types of services which everybody looks up to so whenever you create an azure account the first thing you'll have to work on or first thing you'll be working on is virtual machines okay so virtual machines are infrastructure as a service so i'll come to that uh, and also you can easily scale up or scale out your resources as your application usage grows so scale up or scale out basically means you can increase the number of servers or you can decrease the number of servers according to the usage of your application if there are more users then you can increase the number of servers if there are lesser users then you can decrease the number of servers there is no tie up there is no lock in until and unless you buy a contract like a year one year contract or two year contract if it's just on demand instances that is basically you're launching whenever you want and deleting whenever you want there is no problem you can increase and decrease that is scale up and scale out the number of resources and servers according to your need okay so there are essentially three types infrastructure as a service platform as a service and serverless so infrastructure as a service is basically they provide you services which are basically infrastructural services like servers networking services uh, database services so even database is a platform managed service a platform as a service but infrastructural services give you 
access to the operating system itself, operating system level access. So in that case, virtual machines are basically servers and uh, yeah, so they give you access. You can select what type of a virtual machine you need, what should be the RAM, what, what should be the storage, what should be the operating system which is running on top of it and everything you can basically manage. Second comes platform managed app service service fabric so app service is a tool which provides you a platform where you can select what runtime you need for example let's say you have a php application you can create an app service you can select the runtime as php and you can upload your code it will automatically provision the servers and host your code for you you don't have to configure or set up anything you just have to upload your code but the code should be compatible to the azure architecture okay so that basically you'll have to make sure, but in this case, it's very, very simple. You don't have to configure anything. You just have to create the app service and upload your code. And finally comes serverless. So serverless in this case, you don't even have to select the runtime. You don't have to provision anything. So functions is a tool for Azure functions where you can, you can use it as a backend tool. You can put your code over there and functions will only run whenever it is triggered. So let's say, I want to run a certain code. For example, let's say I have a application which will uh, modify images. It's basically an image uh, modifier or image resizer tool. Okay. So now whenever somebody uploads an image and clicks on the button modify image, I want this particular code to run to modify that particular image, but I don't want this code to be running all the time. I just want it to run when they click on that particular button, right? So you can put that piece of code in Azure functions and when they click on the button, it'll trigger the code, it'll run the code and it'll send back the data and that's it. So let's say that code runs for one second. You only have to pay for that particular one second in which the code ran. You don't have to basically pay for the servers which are running in the backend. So for example, let's say you launch a virtual machine. If it's running for one hour and you're just using the machine for like two minutes, you still have to pay for one hour because it's running for an hour. But when it comes to serverless code only, that is Azure functions, in this case, even though the function is active all the time, you only pay for the time when the code runs. If the code runs for 10 seconds, you only pay for the 10 seconds. If it only runs for 20 seconds, you only pay for the 20 seconds. So these are the different types of compute offerings which Azure provides. Why did I want to give you this information? So that you can know Azure provides various types of services, a variety of services. And these are just some of it. These are just the compute offerings, all right? Coming to the next one, why Azure? So in this case, basically the benefits, security is much better in Azure. Uh, why? Because again, cloud computing security is much better. Azure invests a billion dollars every single year in research and development and also security professionals. You can just visit their website and check these information. Uh, so this is what they state. They put in billion uh, a billion dollar in security of their Azure uh, architecture. So that a normal company cannot spend $1 billion in security and hiring top security professionals, right? That's one thing. Scalability, you can scale up and scale out whenever you want and whatever you want. So you can scale up and scale out any resource you want. Second, third comes worldwide access. So this I'll come to the next slide. Where I'll explain about this. Fourth one is hybrid capability. That is, you can connect to your on-premises network. You can also connect to your cloud network or you can connect to a different cloud network. And also you can have it as a private and a public cloud. If you want to know what a private and a public cloud is, please visit our previous video on cloud computing, beginner cloud computing video, you'll understand it even better. And flexibility, you can uh, delete your instances whenever you want. You can create your resources whenever you want. You can uh, um, basically delete the Azure account whenever you want. There is no lock-in, there is no problem. You can do whatever you want with the Azure account. Okay, so now talking about worldwide access, they have many data centers. They have they have data centers in 54 different regions. So you can see this, right? This complete map. They have regions all over these places. And whichever is marked blue, this basically means these regions are currently under building. So they are building data centers in these regions and they will be available soon. And uh, so yeah, the rest are all the available data centers. So why worldwide access? So let's say I have an application for which I have customer base in India. Okay. So now let's assume that my customer base is growing in US. My application is getting popular in US. So now I want to move this application into US. So 
if I still run it on an Indian data center, obviously there would be latency if for the US customers, right? So I want to migrate the application into the US data centers. So now if it is an on-premises data center, if my application was running in an on-premises data center in India, then I would have to set up a data center and hire people to maintain that in US and host my application over there. But if not, if my application is running on Azure, I just can migrate the entire application's architecture into an US data center and that's it. The application would be ready to go in the US data centers. That's it. So this is what basically worldwide access means. All right, coming to the last part of this particular session, integral Azure services. So I'm going to talk about few integral Azure services. If you're going to start up with Azure, these are the services which you'll have to learn first. And I'll be opening this particular website. So this website gives you a lot of information about Azure. So we'll check out that later. So Azure SQL. So modern SQL family for migration and app modernization. So Azure SQL is a tool, it's a platform as a service tool, which provides you a platform to create a SQL database. So you can select what type of uh, SQL engine you need, for example, Microsoft SQL Server or MySQL, you can select that. But within a couple of clicks, you can create a database which is running on the cloud where you get all the access and you can just connect it to your local client and start using the database. The database is running on the cloud, but you can still connect it to your local client and access the database. And then Linux virtual machines. So virtual machines are basically uh, servers which runs on the data center of Azure. Okay. So in this case, Linux virtual machines are basically virtual machines which have the Linux operating system running on. It could be Ubuntu, it could be Red Hat, it could be uh, SUSD Linux, it could be CentOS, it could be any Linux operating system, but these are Linux virtual machines. There are also Windows virtual machines, which are available in Azure. And uh, yeah, so again, you can launch a Windows machine over there. And then comes to app servers, I just explained to you, right? So app services again, quickly create powerful cloud apps for web and mobile. So let's say if you want to launch a web application, let's say you have all the code and everything is available. You have two options. You can launch a virtual machine and you can set up everything over there. You can download the software, you can configure it, you can modify it according to your needs. You can basically do every single thing in that. You can modify it to the brim and then you can host your application to it. But let's say you don't want to do that. You don't want to concentrate on the configuration part. You don't want to concentrate on the server part. You only want to make your application better. So you're working on the code mostly. You don't have the time to set up your servers. So in that case, you can go with app servers. You just have to select the runtime, upload your code. It will host everything for you. It will create the servers in the backend. It will host your code for you. It will configure everything for you. You just have to manage your code and your application's data. That's it. Okay, so these three are pretty integral Azure services. There are also other services like storage services in Azure, which are integral. So let me open this particular website. Okay, so azurecharts.com, you can also visit this particular website. It gives you an overview of all the Azure services, right? So here again, uh, let's say, let's look at the infrastructure as a service. So these are services which are coming under the infrastructure as a service domain. So under compute, let's just uh, discuss about the popular ones. So for example, virtual machines. So you can provision Windows and Linux virtual machines in seconds. So again, if you click on it, you can see everything about it. Okay. Okay. So next comes virtual machine scale sets. So now virtual machine is a singular entity. Let's say you want to launch multiple virtual machines for your application. Let's say your application is gaining popularity every day and you want to launch multiple application. Okay. So let's say that for handling hundred users, you need one server. So now suddenly your application has thousand users. So now you need 10 servers and the next day your application has 10,000 users. So now 10 into 10. So you have hundred servers. So now to do that, you would have to use virtual machine scale sets and set up a scaling policy. According to the usage, it will automatically increase the number of services. If the usage decreases, it will automatically decrease the number of services. This will basically make it really cost optimized and also it will make it uh, much more efficient and your application will be always available. Okay. So this is one thing. And then comes the networking services. So without the networking services, virtual machines can't exist because virtual machines are basically servers and servers exist within networks. 
So the main service in networks is the virtual network. So you can create a private network which is isolated from all the other private networks in the Azure cloud, right? So you can do that in Azure and also you can connect it to your on-premises networks as well. Uh, there is an option to do that. You can create a connection between your virtual network and your on-premises existing network so that the servers or the resources in these two networks can communicate with each other. And then load balancer, let's say you have a uh, hundred servers, 50 servers has one feature of the application and another 50 servers has another feature of the application. So now let's say whenever people search for the first feature, they have to go to the first uh, 50 servers in the first 50 servers fleet. And then there is second 50 servers in that particular fleet. Okay. So uh, this basically is, let's say if they're searching for the first feature, they will be taken to the first server. If they are searching for the second, they should be taken to the second server. You can set that up in load balancer. Whenever people are searching for it, let's say the first feature, it goes to the load balancer. In load balancer, you can set up a rule. Let's say if, if the website is example.com slash feature one, so then it will go to the first feature server. If it's feature two, it'll go to the second feature server. You can set up that rule in load balancer and according to the incoming URL, it'll load balance. So it'll basically balance the load to the appropriate servers so that you always have your applications running. Okay. So this is infrastructure as a service. Then platform as a service. So most of the services are platform as a service. They give you a platform in which you can configure whatever you need to do. For example, in networking, these are platform as a services. Uh, in compute, these are platform as a services. So app service, as I told you, is platform as a service. Azure Functions is a platform as a service. SQL database is a platform as a service. Database for MySQL, database for MariaDB, database for PostgreSQL. So as I told you, you can launch databases for your database engine according to your needs okay so now i'm just going to deselect it all services so there are essential storage services as well so there is something called azure storage so azure storage has various types of storage units inside of it so in azure storage you have blob storage you have azure table storage you have file storage so you can learn more about azure storage from the azure documentation so now so this is one more integral tool so virtual machines app service azure storage sql databases and virtual networks these five are very very integral tools and you can start off by learning them and also you can basically go to azure documentation docs.microsoft.com and here if you want to get started with azure so this is the first documentation i would suggest for you to go through but you are already watching this video so you're already in the right place you would have already gained a lot of information about azure so that's it for today's session guys i hope it was helpful and informative for you if you have any queries leave a comment down below and we would be addressing all of your questions and also please remember to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our upcoming videos and also if you enjoy our content leave a like and share our videos so that you get more of this curated content thank you hey guys welcome to this azure tutorial by scalar so in this particular tutorial we'll be learning the basics of azure and also we'll be covering how to start off with azure that is basically how you can create an account in azure and how to get a free trail and how to create your first virtual machine on azure so that's what we'll be looking into i'm cody shuren and i'll be taking you through this entire tutorial and before we move on to this particular session please make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our upcoming videos and also leave a like if you enjoy our content and if you have any queries please leave a comment in the comment section and we would be addressing all of your queries so now before we actually get into the creation of the account and doing the uh, demo where we create a server let's look at a quick introduction to cloud computing and azure before we start with the Azure tutorial, first let's understand what is cloud computing because once we understand cloud computing, we can easily get what Azure is. So cloud computing. Cloud computing is basically an on-demand delivery of services over the internet. So there can be different types of services. There can be SaaS, there can be PaaS, and there can be IaaS, that is infrastructure as a service. So software as a service. So software as a service could be any software, could be Gmail, it could be a Slack, it could be any software which you get over the internet, 
which you can use, but you cannot know where the code or your application's data is being stored. For example, if you're using Gmail, your emails are getting stored in Google data center, right? But you don't know where it is stored. You just get the access to the software that is Gmail in order to send mails. That's it. Next coming to pass. So now pass is basically another type of service, which is called platform as a service, where you will be given a platform. For example, in Azure, there is a platform called app service where you can create an app service and just upload your code. It will automatically create the servers and all the other provisions you need for your application to work. That's it. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to set up the server or install any software. You just have to create the app service, upload your code. It will take care of everything for you. That's basically pass. And finally, infrastructure as a service. And this is the most commonly and widely used service in cloud because that's why people use cloud for. So virtual machines, there are other types of services which use virtual machines. There is Azure Kubernetes service, there is Azure Container service. There are so many other infrastructural services which provide you infrastructural needs and satisfy them. So that's basically the three types of services which cloud computing provides. So now Azure is basically will provide you pass and infrastructure as a service that is IaaS. So these two types of services are provided by Azure. Software as a service is also provided in certain areas, but it's not mainly uh, concentrated. Azure is essentially for pass and IaaS, okay? So this is basically Azure. So now when you talk about Azure, Azure is basically a cloud provider which provides these services right the services which i mentioned ias and pass so these services are provided by azure that's it so it is a cloud provider owned by microsoft which provides various types of cloud services it's not anything new it's pretty much the same thing as aws and google cloud and other cloud providers which are available in the market so this is basically azure and also there are a lot of advantages it's flexible you don't have to uh, pay upfront for it you just have to pay once you've used all the resources you just have to pay for what you've used it's also scalable you can increase and decrease the number of resources as you go it's global you have data centers all across the globe if you have an application in india and if you want to migrate it to us you can do that and then again there are more things there are benefits there are features which azure has and if you want to check out those fundamentals you can check out this particular video which is already available in scalers youtube channel which will give you a better understanding of the basic fundamentals Azure and then start off continuing this video because I'll be showing you how to create an Azure account and how to create a virtual machine and getting started with Azure. So now let's get forward with it. So guys, yeah. So this is the portal, portal.azure.com. This is the homepage. You can see I actually just created a free trial subscription. I had this account, but I had a pay as you go subscription. I just created this free trial subscription so that I could show you what a free trial subscription is actually. So before I actually start off with showing you around the Azure portal, first let me show you what is the free trial subscription in Azure. And then let me show you how to create an account in Azure. It's pretty simple. I'll show you that. And then, yeah, and then I'll take you through the portal. So first of all, I'm just going to search for free trial Azure sorry it's azure so you will get this option here create your azure free account today okay so over here this page basically tells you what do you get from this free trail so first of all you get popular services free for 12 months 40 plus other services free always so also you get usd 200 dollars as your credit and you will be given 30 days you can basically uh, use it on any azure service you want and you can use that complete credit so if you're from india it will be around 40500 rupees uh, credit and you can basically use that credit in order to uh, basically experiment with certain resources which are let's say quite expensive resources if you don't want to put in your actual money you can create a free trail account before you actually create an Azure account and then go around with it, play with it, uh, try to figure out what you want to do and understand how much it costs and everything. Okay, so this is the free trail. This is what you get with the free trail. And uh, yeah, so try free Azure app service, cognitive services, Azure machine learning, virtual machines, community service, and apps analytics, Azure functions, logic apps, uh, Azure DevOps. So these are some of the free services. Uh, which is provided and also some of these services are not actually free for example is your machine learning uh, when you create it at the first right now during the free trail everything is free because everything will come under this credit right 
everything would be free but after the 30 days you would be seeing if you're still using these uh, let's say as your kubernetes service this a uh, quite expensive service if you're using that you will be getting billed for it but let's say you're using aks for one hour you will just have to pay for the one hour you are using that particular service you don't have to pay for anything else okay yeah so these are some of the services you get for free and if you want to understand about every single service you get for free you can just click on this see all free services and over here you will be given the entire list of free services with how long you're going to get it for free right so always basically means you get it always free and 12 months means uh, you get it free for 12 months so uh, how to understand how it is always free it's not meant that the complete service is free certain parts certain features and certain types within that particular service is free for example if you take automation uh, 500 minutes of job runtime if your job runtime is within 500 minutes you will not get billed but if it exceeds those 500 minutes you will get billed according to the minutes uh, which you're using it for let's say you used it for 567 minutes you will get billed for the 67 minutes but the first 500 minutes are free because it comes under the free tier okay same thing let's say i come to azure uh, database for a mysql so host a fully managed scalable mysql database in azure so 750 hours of flexible server a uh, burstable b1 ms instance 32 gb storage and 32 gb backup storage so now it's your database for mysql so 750 hours per month is free that is let's say you are using one azure database in that case the total usage should come under 750 hours per month and if you are using two azure databases some of those two azure databases put together should be lesser than 750 hours the usage time only then it will be free if you are exceeding the 750 hour limit then you'll have to pay for the extra hours let's say you've used for 760 hours then you'll have to pay for the extra 10 hours and burstable b1 ms instance so this is the only type of instance which uh, you will be allowed to use under the free trail other types of instances which are more powerful and more expensive will not be given under this free trail so just go through this complete free trail one and you can understand what are the services which are free always and every single thing for example uh, sql server 2019 developer editions is free always uh, text analytics 500 uh, 5000 transactions uh, are free for 12 months uh, text to speech ai plus machine learning type of service uh, 5 million characters standard 500000 characters neural uh, 5 million characters custom so these are the things which are free under text to speech and it's always free virtual machine same thing 750 hours are free uh, for 12 months and virtual network always free it's virtual network is basically a logical component within which you will be creating other azure resources so you will not get built for virtual network you will get built for the resources you are creating within the virtual network um, yeah so this is basically it and uh, let's come down four more azure services now free for 12 months so the thing is they keep introducing new azure services to the free trail uh, and for now you can see plus now you get azure logic apps free always so azure logic apps has been made free always uh, azure key vault azure media services uh, database for mysql and postgresql also have been brought under the 12 months free uh, so yeah so this is basically it and to start off with it you can just click on start free and you can sign up over here but the thing is i've already logged in you can see this right my account is already ready uh, that's why it is showing this uh, let me do one thing let me open an incognito window azure free trail start free so first thing you'll have to do is you'll have to log in into uh, let's say if you already have a microsoft account you can directly log in into it if you do not have a microsoft account use your existing email id to create one so it's a pretty simple one so that's it so do this uh, once you create this let me just log into this so if my account uh, it won't show basically so basically you'll you'll uh, get a code and then you can log in by looking at the so i'm just taking my mail for the code you will get a single use code um yeah so to find out into the three six okay so if it's a new account then it'll ask you to provide certain details so first of all it'll ask you to fill in your details and second thing it'll ask you to accept uh, what type of an account you want and the third is providing your credit card or debit card details so 
once you provided your credit card details so it will basically uh, accept it if the credit card is valid and uh, again to verify if the credit card is valid it will basically take two rupees from your bank account and then it will be credited back in three to four, five days three to five working days so it's just to verify if it's a valid credit card and uh, yeah so that can be done so once that is done you will be asked to choose what type of an account you want so there would be three options provided uh, free trail there would be pay as you go and there would be another business one so you should either go for free trail or pay as you go but again for practice always go for the free trail so once you click on the free trail your free trail account would be created and that's it you're good to go so let me just close this all right so uh, yes the free trail uh, will be created so you can just go to cost and management over here let me just click on this so over here cost and management right you can just click on subscriptions and view what subscription is active so i already had a pay as ego subscription which i disabled long back but i just wanted to use the same as your account again so i created a free trail subscription under this same account and uh, it is active right now so you can see that right it's active but i've not used it yet so that's why there are no charges there are no covers there are no invoices and uh, yeah you can see your free credit is uh, expires in 29 days upgrade to keep your account going so at the 29th day basically you will be given a uh, mail it will be asking you if you want to upgrade your account to keep using the account if not it will become inactive and disabled if you want you can upgrade to pay as you go so you can click on it and select pay as you go and upgrade it that's it for now it's free trail you can see you can change the subscription name also yeah so basically this is it then you can you are set up with azure you can start off by doing whatever you want so everything will be available for you you can create a virtual network you can create an sql database you can create a virtual machine you can start creating uh, storage units using first you'll have to create a storage account inside the storage account you can create a blob storage and upload all content inside of it so you can do so many things using azure so in this particular session as it's a beginner session and i first of all showed you how to start off with azure first thing i want to show you is how to create a virtual machine in azure so that's the most basic thing and i'll be showing you step by step so follow if you want to start off with azure uh, this is the right video for you to start off with so follow me with every single step you can provide the names also uh, uh, the same virtual machine names it doesn't matter as it's just for practice right so you can just do it and uh, yeah so once it's done you will understand how virtual machine is working so let's get started with the virtual machine part right now okay so now to start creating the virtual machine uh, first you will have to click on the virtual machine right so once you do it uh, you can see there are various options so only option you should be worried about right now is a create option so just click on create virtual machine not start with a preset configuration so virtual machine where you can basically create your own virtual machine by providing every single configuration you need instead of using an already preset configuration so i don't want to do this i don't want to use an already existing configuration i just want to create one which i configure i customize right uh, so if you don't have time to customize if you just want to create uh, a general purpose one or you can just click on dev test and you can just select what type of workload type you want what type of cpu you want you can also skip this step it will automatically choose one for you but obviously don't do this go with virtual machine right okay so the first option you get is free trail so what subscription you have if you have just one subscription active it will just automatically take the subscription and it will ask you for a resource group so a resource group is basically a group which has various types of resources in it right so for now if i create this virtual machine and i'm creating this virtual machine within this resource group so this virtual machine will be within this resource group and if i create another virtual machine and also put it inside this resource group so this resource group will be like a folder which has two different virtual machines and i can create a database and again put it inside this resource group i can create an app service again put it inside this resource group so now this resource group will have all of these resources now if i just don't want all of these resources i can directly just delete the resource group it will delete all the resources within the group so that's basically uh, a resource group there is more to it but for now this is what you have to know it's pretty simple it's a group of resources and uh, it could be any resource you want and once you delete the group all the resources within the group will automatically get 
deleted so click on create new and i'm just going to provide as um as your tutorial and okay so now next is virtual machine name you can provide any name you want i'm just going to provide again scalar one again so you have to choose the location which shows free services eligible okay wherever it shows free services eligible choose that region because only those regions allow you to work under the free tier limit so i'm just going to go with east us you can also go with west us too you can go with southeast asia as well uh, yeah so i'm just going to go with east us availability options i'm not going to select any forget about it uh, let's just concentrate on the most basic things today uh, because again availability options is basically uh, selecting what kind of an availability zone you need for example let's say if you choose availability zone what availability zones you need so how many availability zones so you need of one two or three so what basically it shows is that you can have this particular server running in the availability zone three or two or one so why because let's say you have an application uh, and you want to have multiple services let's say you want three services so sorry if you want three servers and you can have one server running in each of these availability zones let's say there is a major power cut or major downtime in availability zone one so there would be other two servers still running so that your application will be always available okay so that's basically availability zone and virtual machine scale set again these are completely other concepts we'll see in the other azure tutorials okay uh, security type let's go with standard all right so image so image is again one of the major parts of creating a virtual machine image is basically like let's say when you are creating a virtual machine in your local system or when you're trying to install uh, an operating system in your laptop you would have this file called a iso file right so image is basically like an iso file it will have all the things necessary to install the operating system all the files necessary to run all the processes to install the operating system and uh, yeah and you can select what type of image you need if you want your server to have ubuntu server 20.04 a later stable version running inside of it in that case you'll have to select it when you put in all the details configure it and then create the server your server will have ubuntu operating system running inside of it so that's basically it and then also select only the images which shows you that it's under free service eligible because all the other so for example if you want to go with windows server 2019 uh, data center so in this case it's not free tier eligible and you will get billed for using this particular image so always go with a free services eligible one if you are not good with ubuntu go with red hat or go with debian or go with centos uh, so choose whatever you want to use i'm just going to go with ubuntu and the spot instance again it's a completely big huge topic we'll cover that in the azure virtual machine tutorial okay uh, for now let's just concentrate on this again so here free service is eligible so this is under the free trail and for 750 hours it comes under the free trail uh, so as i have a free trail i don't have to worry about anything i can just choose anything i want because uh, i'm not going to use it for a complete month i'm just going to run it for a couple minutes or couple uh, hours and uh, that won't cost me that much it'll cost me what like so let's say it's 546 per month so that is 500 so basically per month how many hours will be there so 24 into 30 so it will be uh, that much and that divided by this particular number 24 into 30 so 546 divided by that so it will basically be a very small and insignificant amount which you can still pay even without the free drill right so i'm just going to go with the basic one b1s because this is the only type of image uh, sorry only type of size which is provided under free drill and then you can choose one more thing you can go with an ssh public key or you can go with a password so uh, if you go with a password it should be 12 characters long with all of the conditions met here if you're going going with an ssh public key you can just generate one over here provide the keeper name generate one and use the uh, uh, public key for logging into your account for now i'm just going to go with password so let's say i want to provide uh, i'm going to provide a big password um so I'm, my username i'm just going to provide my name okay password let's provide scalar academy one two three scalar academy 
at one two three. Done. So I'm just I just provided the password as Scalar Academy at one two three. So it should be twelve characters long. It should have a special character and it should have numbers. So make sure you take all those boxes so that your password will be valid. And uh, also I'm just going to make it K. Yeah. Okay. So now this is or uh, you can provide your username and password according to your name and your preferences. Also, don't tell the password to anybody else because if they get the password and if they know the IP address of your server which you just created, they will be able to log in. Okay, so now public inbound ports. So now if you are using an SSH public key, then port number SSH should be enabled. Uh, but again, if you're just going with a password, it's not required. But again, it's better to have one port enabled. This is the SSH port one. So SSH basically means secure shell. Why secure shell? Because so SSH public key is obviously much more safer than using a password. Why? Because the server you are creating will have a public key and you will be given a private key which you will download and store in your personal computer which will be only with you. So even though the server's IP address and other details are given to the public, they will not be able to log into the server because they would need the private key to decrypt the public key in order to log in into the server. So the private key is only with you. So only you can decrypt it. So even if they have a random private key, they will not be able to log in. So that's impossible. So that's a, that's why it's a much more a safer option. But password is much more a simpler option for practice. You can just go with password and just see how a server uh, is connecting, right? Okay, so this is done. So this is the first one. Next is disks. Yeah, so again, default size uh, 30 uh, GB, resize to uh, 64 GIB P6. So you can just go with this or you can just keep the default only. The default also will come under free account, uh, free tier eligible. And uh, premium SSD, standard SSD, you can also go with this standard HDD, but go, don't go with the HDD, it's much slower. Uh, so this is for production and performance workloads. Standard SSD is for web servers, slightly used enterprise applications and dev slash test. So I'm just going to go with standard SSD, right? And then you can just use with the default encryption. You don't have to go with any other things. Again, this is just a starting practice. So you don't have to concentrate more on this. Just follow through what I'm choosing. Choose standard SSD. So the selected VM size supports premium disks. We recommend premium SSD for high or IOPS workloads. Uh, virtual machines with premium disks qualify for 99.9% .9 connectivity SLA. So they are just saying that it will be much faster and it will be highly available this particular storage if you choose premium SSD. But I'm just going to go with standard SSD. We don't need that much. Again, you can still go with this premium SSD uh, because it's the free trail and you have credits. You won't be charged anything. So you can go with premium SSD as well. No problem. But again, if you're beyond your uh, free trail then go with standard SSD it will be much cheaper than premium okay so here you can attach another disk if you want apart from the root disk or for, apart from the main disk which is connected in which the operating system will be installed so apart from that you can attach another disk for example like a, a, a an external storage or an uh, external hard drive so like that you can connect one more um, yeah so this is not you don't have to worry about this Okay, done. So once this is provided, go to networking. So again, networking is important because without a network, you will not be able to create a resource. So without a network, a server cannot run. So here I don't have any network created in this particular account. So it automatically is considering the name of the, so the name of the uh, server, which I'm just creating. So the resource group, Azure Tutorial VNet. So if I click on create uh, new, I can change the name of this. I can provide a different address range also. So again, VNet is a completely different concept. I'm not going to go into it because it's a really huge concept. So, and then there is a subnet. A subnet is basically a subnetwork within the virtual network which is created. A subnetwork basically means a range of IP addresses. So your uh, server which you're creating will be assigned an IP address from the range created by this particular uh, subnet, okay? And then public IP, scalar one IP. So you can create a new one or it'll automatically create one for you. Uh, let it be basic. Uh, public inbound ports, let SSH be available right now. And I'm gonna allow HTTP as well. Um, no, I don't wanna allow HTTP right now. I'll show you why, uh, how HTTP works, how inbound ports work. Uh, so right now I'm just gonna keep SSH only. And then I'm, I don't need load balancing right now. 
and click on next management uh, enable basic plan for me yes okay so you don't don't uh, click on anything else in management section uh, nothing else is required and then extensions again this is also not required for now these are advanced settings which is not required for the first time so then the name this is basically a tag let's say you have hundreds of servers and you have one type of server let's say there are like 20 servers for one particular web application so you can provide the name as web app one and when you search for web app one all right it will automatically list down all of those servers with the tag web app one so that you don't have to go through all the hundred servers and see if this particular server is the server which has that particular web application right so you can provide a tag if you want and then finally review and create so it will basically validate everything all the details you've provided so it's taking some time to validate so let's just wait okay so validation has been passed so i'm not completely uh, agreed to the terms so that's why they're asking me so let me just provide my mobile phone and validate this and uh, yeah so let me do that just give me one second we'll be back but just look at this cost uh, so it's basically uh, seven point seven four nine three rupees that is like 74 paise per hour and it's pretty cheap even basically even without the free trail this is very cheap right you can still afford it if you're just practicing it um so you can just review everything over here and then you can create it but before creating it for me it's showing this but for you if you already created and provided all the details it won't show this all right so just give me one second guys now i'll be validating my thing and once that is done we'll be back so i provided my phone number and basically clicked on create that's all uh, what i did and then in the notification section you would be seeing this uh, deployment in progress and again you'll be taken to the deployment in progress page and you can wait and you can see all the resources getting created here right we can just refresh it if you want see uh, first an nsg is created a network security group uh, the network security group will basically have the uh, what is that the network security group will basically allow those port numbers and the protocols which we just gave the ssh protocol and you can see i've been given 14500 credit right you can see it here right you'll also get this credit and you can use this credit to create whatever service you want practice whatever service you want so you don't have to worry about it yeah so you can see uh, all the services are getting created so only uh, when the uh, vnet is created then the virtual machine will get created because without the network you cannot create as a resource so inside the network the vm will be created so now even the virtual machine is created and that's why it showed that so virtual machine agent status is not ready that basically means the virtual machine is created but it's still trying to boot okay so it will take some time to do that and but i'll just explain you what are the things which we are provided with so the main things you'll have to look into is the first one the public ip address so i'm just opening this particular ip address but there won't be anything available because the server is not created second one there is no web server running inside of it okay okay so then uh, it's a linux operating system uh, it's version 2 the size the ram size uh, yeah all the details which are necessary is provided over here then you can just refresh and see if the agent uh, status is ready so you can see the status is running yeah so now the agent status is also ready so let me just refresh the complete page right so uh, yeah so the public ip address everything is available guys so the server is perfectly running so the next thing is obviously to connect to the server right and uh, so there is no web page in my server right now but soon there will be that's what i wanted to show you and uh, yeah so now you can connect it via multiple ways you can connect it via ssh you can connect it via rdp and bastion so i'm just going to go with ssh so uh, yeah i can just connect it through my terminal so i'm just going to open terminal right now there is no private key so so uh, there is no private key that's why it asks for a password let me just make this bigger 
so uh, first it just uh, i provided this particular thing ssh code at uh, this it didn't uh, it was not able to establish it because there was no uh, private key or public key but then it asked me to basically connect to it i connected to it and it was added to my list of known hosts so now it's asking for the password so the next obvious thing you'll have to do is provide the password which you provided in the azure website to create this particular server right so it was scalar academy at one two three yeah so the server has been connected guys so you can see right let me do an ls let me do a pwd so i am in slash home slash cody so i'm within the virtual machine which got created by azure so before this let me exit let me do a pwd so you can see user slash cody this is my personal computers present working directory let me just provide this sorry so now if i provide my password yeah so now i'm within the uh, server which i created over azure so i think it's pretty understandable right it's pretty simple yeah so we are within the server right now so the first thing i want to do is i want to install uh, sorry first i want to update my server so always do this so sudo apt get update so if it's it's an ubuntu server that's why i'm using apt get if it's a linux any other linux distribution like centos or debian you have to use yum yum so sudo yum update it'll update your server so always update your server uh, once you updated your server next you can do or you can install whatever software you want so now i want to install apache 2 the web server So this will basically install the web server and will have a default web page running inside of it. Okay. So now the thing is, even though the default web page is running inside, so it won't be visible in the browser. I'll I'll tell you why. First, let me take you to where exactly the web page is. Then I'll tell you why it won't. Yeah. So there is this index.html page, right? This is the HTML page which will be shown in the web browser. But so if I go here, if I refresh, even though there is a web server running in my server, even though there is a web page already available, it won't show because we did not enable the protocol and the port number for this particular, basically this particular functionality or this particular process. So we'll have to basically enable it in networking. So let me go to networking. Let me check the options available here. So you can see, right, port number 22 is available. Let's add one more inbound port rule. So the one which I wanted to add is the source can be any even you uh, if you have this uh, IP address you can uh, launch it but when you are trying to launch it I would have already deleted this instance so if the web page is not showing that basically means I deleted the instance in my account deleted the uh, virtual machine in my account so if it is not showing just create your own and launch your own uh, web page in it and then try it it will surely work uh, destination any everything is fine so destination port numbers it's 80 so tcp port 80 done and add so i'm creating port 80 rule so right now it's not showing right so if port 80 is available it should show let me show oh, yeah uh 310 port 80 80 port number 80 is available right now port number 80 is allowed so apache 2 uses the listener which runs on port number 80 so now if i refresh this it should show the web page which is basically within my server which i created because port number 80 is allowed by the server right now so there is outbound we don't need to provide outbound um, so it's exposed to the internet that is all fine no issues yeah so now you can see there is a web page running inside my server because I created it. So one more, I just want to show you. So let's let's do this. Uh, one dot HTML. So there is no web page, right? So let me create sudo nano one dot HTML. Hello world. This is one one dot HTML file. Okay, so there is a one dot HTML file within the directory which it is being listened to. Okay, so now. If I refresh this, would the web page show or wouldn't it show? So it should show according to the things we've done uh, because it is looking for web pages within this particular directory. 
and also by default it will search for this but when we are providing the actual file name it should take us to that particular file name right so it should show this particular web page which i just created if it doesn't show there is some other problem but it will show yeah now you can see right hello world this is one.html file so basically our virtual machine is working fine we've created uh, a server we've created a web server within the server and uh, and we've also created another file to show you it's working in real time, right? So you can also do this guys, it's pretty simple. And uh, you can also create your own server. And one more thing I just wanted to show you is how you can delete it. So I've created the server, but again, so you can stop the instance. Once you've stopped the instance, again, you won't get billed for it. So you can stop the instance and tomorrow you can start it again. For those number of hours which where the instance was stopped, you won't get built anything but if you have anything stored in the storage even though the instance is stopped the storage is still available right so you will get built for the storage so make sure it is within the free tier limit so you won't get built but if not you can just stop it if you don't want to create a similar server tomorrow if you actually need it but if you don't need it just click on delete and uh, yeah so i don't need all of this delete with vm you can just select this and i have understood uh, apply force delete yeah, so if, if you basically click this, it will automatically uh, delete all the associated uh, resources with it. So I'm just going to click on delete. Yeah, so it will take some time, but it'll eventually it will delete the instance. Okay, so this is how you can delete it, guys. And uh, yeah, so that's basically it for the beginner tutorial in Azure. I'll be taking you through various other tutorials. I'll be teaching you virtual machine even more in depth. I'll be showing you how to create a Windows server. And then I'll be showing you a storage uh, tutorial in Azure. I'll be showing you a virtual network tutorial. So there are more videos coming up. So make sure you subscribe to us so that you get those videos in the future. So this is basically it. You can follow through this particular demo and create it. It's very, very simple and you can start with it. So yeah, thank you guys. So guys, that's it for today's session. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any queries, leave a comment down below and we would be addressing them all. And also leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Thank you. Hey guys, welcome to the Azure Basic Session by Scalar. So in this particular Azure Basic Session, we're gonna look into how to create a storage account and how to create a blob container. So these are the two things we'll be looking into and we have introduced the basic session to give you a quick and easy going video which will get to the point and teach you what exactly is said uh, so if you want bigger tutorials if you want longer tutorials we already have certain tutorials on azure and aws in our channel you can check them out but these will just contain what is said that is if i say that i'm going to create a storage account and a blob container only that will be shown so that you can understand it easily and then you can proceed more of basics would come in our channel so make sure to subscribe to our channel if you want our upcoming videos and also leave a like if you enjoy our content and if you have any queries leave a comment down below and we would be helping you out with any question so now without any further delays let's begin with it okay guys so now let's start off with the azure storage video so what we're going to look into is basically how to create an azure storage account and how to launch our first storage blob container within it so it's going to be up to the point and it's going to be a very short video so that we could give you a clear understanding of what's going on so to create a storage account obviously first thing you'll have to do is log in into your azure account so portal.azure.com login into it and this would be the home page so the first step obviously selecting storage accounts if it is not showing here you can just search for storage accounts over here and click on it okay so click on storage accounts and you would see this you could either click on create here or you could either click on create storage account over here so whatever you click it will take you to this particular window which could be scrolled you can see i clicked on create so this is open right so now over here we have around seven different options so six options we'll have to provide information and finally it's review and create so first whenever you create a resource you will have to select the subscription so the only subscription i have is the free trail one so i'm selecting that then uh, the resource group so in the azure tutorial which is available already in our channel i have created this resource group azure tutorial so if you do not have any resource group right now create a new one just click on it and provide a name it'll automatically create one for you 
okay so next is you'll have to provide a storage account name so let's see this the name must be unique across all existing storage account names in azure so that basically means this particular storage account right the name should be unique all across entire azure so nobody else even if it's not your account if someone else is uh, using it even they should not have the same name as your storage account for example let's say i'm typing azure see the resource name azure or what trademark or reserved word okay so this is not you uh, usable because it's a reserved word so now let's say azure uh, one two three okay i'm not uh, let me not use uh, azure so let me say hello okay so storage account name hello is already taken that basically means somebody else already has a storage account named hello so you cannot use this so i'm just going to use scalar storage account okay sorry i can't use this done so, so scalar storage account so this is what uh, is the name i provided and it's common across everyone because here you can see that uh, there is no uh, error showing then you can choose the region in which you want to host your storage bucket so it's going to be in east us i'm not changing it if you want you can change it according to your needs right okay and then performance so there are two kinds of uh, performance one is standard one is premium standard is basically uh, its general purpose so for everything you can use it it's uh, it's it's the most commonly used one if you're just using it for practice or for a simple project go with standard if you're going to use it for a project which requires low latency low latency in the sense when a customer or end user is searching for something and they want to find it immediately so in that case you'll have to go with premium so if it's an actual product which you're going to give it to users for usage in that case go with premium but if it's a simple practice or you want to save costs go with standard and then there is redundancy so you can select what kind of redundancy you need first local redundant storage so local redundant it's it's the lowest cost option okay so it basically means uh, so again server rack and device failures so if the server rack or device fails in the local in the particular availability zone in which it's hosted it will provide you the data back but this is not recommended for critical scenarios only non critical scenarios that is again if it's a simple project if you're just hosting it for your own personal project then go with locally redundant storage but if in case you want the data to be available in a secondary region in case there is a failure in the primary region so you can go with the geo redundant storage so what basically happens here is it will have the same storage replicated in a secondary storage if the primary storage location goes down that is the east us availability zone goes down it will already be available in another uh, location so that data will already be there so you can easily fail over to that zone okay so that's geo redundant then there is zone redundant so in intermediate option with protection against data levels uh, data center level failures uh, recommended for high availability scenarios so geo redundant it's for backup scenarios this is for high availability scenarios high availability scenarios in the sense let's say your application is very very uh, popular uh, lots of customers are using it in that case you can go with zone redundant that is your data will always be available uh, even though one or two data centers go down there would be other data centers which have your existing data and finally geo zone redundant so this provides both it combines geo redundant and zone redundant so this is for critical data scenarios if it's a really popular application let's say if you have a uber if you own a really popular uh, application which cannot have any data failures in that case go with geo zone redundant storage but it's obviously the most expensive option available here okay so i'm just going to go with uh, geo redundant next advanced so here you can select uh, what kind of uh, so if you want a secure transfer via uh, rest api you can select this you can unselect this as well if you want to enable blob public access so if i'm creating a blob storage do i want to give it public access if you want you can tick it if not you can take it away enable storage account key access yes uh, minimal tls version so this will automatically be uh, taken as the latest version so you don't have to worry about it so if you have an active directory you can authorize that you can only log in into your storage account using the active directory but right now i'm not using it let's just concentrate on creating this so everything else you can just leave it like this only one thing i want to discuss here is the access tier 
again under blob storage so there are two types of access to yours hot and cool hot basically means you're constantly using the data constantly the data in the storage is being uh, uh, downloaded or being looked at or being used so in that case choose hot but if you want to choose cool that basically means your data is not frequently accessed let's say it's accessed once every week or uh, once every two weeks in just to keep your backup data and just to check history data just to store history data in that case go with cool okay but i'm just going to go with hot and next comes networking so yeah i, I just want public endpoint i don't want uh, private endpoint so you can go with public endpoint selected networks that basically means you can just provide access to your particular ip address i'm just going to go with all networks next is network routing microsoft network routing and there is internet routing so determine how your route travels uh, to its Azure endpoint Microsoft network routing is recommended for most customers So Microsoft network routing will direct your traffic to enter the Microsoft cloud as quickly as possible from its source Internet routing will direct your traffic to enter the Microsoft cloud closer to the Azure endpoint So if you use Microsoft network routing, so it could take you to the nearest There is the nearest data center and then through the data center. It could travel uh, Basically, it would travel privately within that this is a much safer method but it could be a little slower until it gets into the nearest one so the travel uh, so because there are multiple routes so that will take some time but internet routing will directly take you to the location for example if you're hosting it in the east us and if you're searching it from india so internet routing will automatically take you to that particular zone and it will directly enter into that cloud so i'm just going to go with microsoft network routing which is a little more secure data production so again so you can let's say if you delete a blob and uh, how long do you want the blob to be available in your trash so all of that so that details you can provide here you can enable versioning directly here or you can enable it later no problem uh, then encryption so you can use Microsoft managed keys which or they automatically provide or you can use customer managed keys but in this in that case you'll have to upload your own key over here okay I'm just going to go with the Microsoft managed keys and all my service types should be encrypted tags I think you guys know tags are basically uh, just uh, optional it's not actually necessary but this particular tag will be applied to all the resources under the storage account so i'm going to provide it as storage provide as scalar one review and create so it will just validate so once validation is passed it's ready to be created so done so once you click on create that basically means you have created your storage account it will take some time to deploy but it has created your storage account so that's what you'll have to think about okay so all the resource info will be provided here let's wait until it gets created okay guys so the resource has been created you can see here right the storage account has been created so i'm clicking on go to resource yes so my storage account is successfully created in east us region secondary also has been created which is west us so uh, why is it available the secondary because we provided geo redundant Okay, so we provided geo redundant. That's why it is showing this. If you provide locally redundant, this wouldn't show. If you provide zone redundant, it won't create a secondary in West US. It will have a secondary within East US itself. But if you provide geo zone redundant, it will have both the secondary and also it will have within the primary itself. Okay, so uh, yeah, geo redundant storage is available. Done. Okay, it's standard and hot. Uh, read access geo redundant storage. So everything we provided has been taken into account and it has been created successfully. Okay, so now let's see over here what are the things which are available. So mainly there are four types of storage, data storage in Azure, containers, file shares, queues and tables. So talking about containers, those are blob storage that is binary large objects. So binary large objects are basically any binary object. It could be audio, video, it could be a PDF file, it could be a text file, a code file. So any binary object, any file which could be converted into binary is a binary large object, right? So that could be stored in containers. Now coming to file shares, file shares are basically, uh, it's a shared storage. For example, once you create a file share, you can attach it to multiple servers, okay? 
it's not that you can only attach it to one single server you can attach it to multiple servers for example let's say there's a large data set stored in this file share and you want to share it to 100 servers so obviously it will be hard to uh, copy into 100 servers or it would be uh, because storage would be wasted in all the 100 servers taking up that space right and if you let's say uh, create 100 file shares and attach it to it again that will also be a waste of money and storage instead you can create one file share put the data set in it and connect it to all of the 100 servers and all of the 100 servers could ping and check this particular storage because it's a shared storage okay so that's basically what file share is and then there is queues queues again it's basically a queue so you can create a fifo queue you can create whatever queue you want for example when you can you can create then you can provide all the details you need so basically you can provide a queue before an application starts its work so whenever a new request comes in it will be added to the queue right and according to that it will send the request inside the application for processing so you can have a queue for that and then table table is basically a, a key value pair no sql database so you can create a table over here and uh, yeah it's pretty much the same thing okay so you can create a no sql database all right okay now coming to containers so you can see there is already one container which got created which basically is created for storing all the logs okay let's just ignore that so now let's create a container container i'm providing the name as container container one so you can select private blob or container so if you select private that basically means nobody else could access it blob in the sense so basically there would be read access for people anonymously okay so you can share your blobs across to people if you select container it will provide read access for the entire container and for blobs so i'm just going to choose blobs because i want blobs to be available so blobs in the container can be read by anonymous requests but the container data is not available anonymous clients cannot enumerate the blobs within the container that is they cannot see the number of blobs they cannot see anything else they could see individual blobs that's it advanced you can select this if you want to so use this encryption scope for all blobs in the container uh, so it's just going to be the same i'm not going to click on it so now let's create it so container is created let me open it now let's upload a file container uploading two files So two files are uploaded guys, you can see here, right? So two files are uploaded here. You can basically see the file over here. This is the URL and if I paste it and you would be able to see the file because blob storage is available for every single person because of anonymous access. Okay, so now I can change the access level to, I can change it back to private. yeah so now you can see it's uh, the specified resource does not exist for repository okay so now let me change it once again let me refresh it once again I click on this select this so now you can see it is showing so this is how you can basically take it yeah and then you can it's pretty easy to delete you can just select and delete it like this and uh, you can change the tier if you want to change it to cool if you're not going to use it you can change it to cool or if you want to archive it you can archive it it's totally your call um yeah so that basically it and what else yeah pretty much that's it guys this is what i wanted to show you and i'm pretty much showed to you guys i'll also just show you how it works as delete when deleting it also delete blob snapshots uh, done so blob snapshot basically is if you have taken up a backup of that blob that will also get deleted okay so now let's go back go to the storage account and go to containers and let's delete the container done and then you can again go back to overview and you can also delete the storage account if you don't need it so you just have to type the name of the storage account and click on delete 
and that's it it'll delete your storage account you don't have to wait for anything it'll automatically delete it yep so now if i refresh this the resource won't be available you can see because it's deleted so that's it guys thank you so much for attending this particular session there would be more basic session coming up so make sure to subscribe and also leave a like if you enjoy our content if you have any queries leave a comment down below and we will be addressing them so thank you Hey guys, welcome to yet another session by Scalar. And in this particular session, we're going to look into Azure Basics. So in this Azure Basics session, we'll be learning how to create an SQL database in Azure. So it's going to be a very, very short and crisp session where you'll be learning how to do exactly what I've stated. That is how to create a SQL database in Azure. So we'll not be covering a lot of other things. We'll just be concentrating on what we are going to do. So once we start, then we'll be going ahead with the demo. You can follow through with the demo. You can open your Azure account and you can just follow the same steps which I'm doing and you'll be done with it and you would have a, a database at the end. Okay. So now before moving on with the session, please make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our upcoming videos and also leave a like if you enjoy our content. And if you have any queries, leave a comment down below and we would love to help you out and address all your issues. Okay, so now without any further delays, let's begin with the session. Okay, guys, so now let's start creating SQL database. Okay, so when you open the Azure portal itself, you would see uh, in the very top domain itself, there is this thing called SQL databases. You can just click on it and it will automatically open. Then we can start creating the database. So select SQL databases and then click on create SQL database. Okay. So first thing, obviously, you'll have to choose the subscription. Subscription is already available, free trail. So I'm going to go with this. If your subscriptions pay as you go, go with that. So whatever subscription it is, you can start using that. And then you can select a resource group which you already have or create a new resource group according to your requirements. Okay. So this is one thing. And then you'll have to provide a database name. So I'm going to name this particular database as MySQL. Um, what shall we name it? I'm just going to name it scalar db1 and then you'll have to select a server but right now we do not have a server because it's the first time i'm creating a sql database right so for the first time you'll have to click on create new and then create a server so i'm just going to name it the same scalar db in dot database dot windows dot net so it's not available it's already in use so we can choose something like scalar db123 yeah, this name is available, so I'm just going to go with this. And then there are multiple authentication methods. Either you can use SQL authentication, which is directly giving in the username and password and logging into. And then there is one more using Azure Active Directory, which I'm not using currently, so I'm not going to go with that. Or you can use both SQL and Azure AD so that it becomes like a MFA, multi-factor uh, multi authentication. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not going to go with that. I'm just going to go with SQL authentication. So a uh, server admin login, I'm going to provide it as admin. Uh, okay, so admin, administrator, root, uh, login manager, we cannot use this uh, or a built-in database name. Okay, a built-in database username. So I'm just going to provide my name, Cody, which is my login and password. Um, okay, they want a password, which is at least eight characters in length. They want uppercase letters, lowercase letters and some alphanumeric characters. So I'm just going to go with my go-to password. Uh, again, so this cannot contain part of your login name as well okay great so i'm just going to go with this okay so uh, the password is selected now clicking on okay so now we've created the server okay so server is ready the database name is provided so do you want an sql elastic pool so first of all what is an sql elastic pool it will basically be let's say a box and within that box there can be multiple sql databases and then according to the size of the box let's say if the box expands the number of sql instances will also increase when the box decreases the number of sql instances also will decrease so what exactly that box represents is that the scalability so if you want uh, so basically when there is a lot of data coming in and you want you need more databases in that case the box will automatically so the box will expand which basically means you will scale up and there will be more databases and then there will be lesser databases if there is no need for sql databases okay so in this case we don't need an elastic pool we are creating a singular instance for one instance we don't need a pool 
for more than two or more instances we would need it and then you have to choose uh, what type of an instance you need okay so for that you can click on configure database and then over here you can see the maximum data size is 250 and uh, so we again under free trail it is completely free you can still use them uh, no issues you can go for a basic one as well you can go for a general purpose one as well where you can select even more things and then there is a standard workload which you can automatically take up for workloads with typical for performance requirements so basic is basically for practice purposes so data max uh, size is 2 gb so you can see the total cost itself is very very less only 359 but when you come to standard it's like thousand uh, rupees but again it's, it doesn't matter because you have the free trail if under the free trail if you're using it there is no issue with it you can still increase the size okay cool so let it be uh, let it be standard i'm just going to click on apply okay so then you can choose the uh, redundant backup storage okay it could be local it could be a zone it could be geo local means there is no uh, redundant backup it's stored uh, the backup will be stored in the same location zone means it will be stored in a different availability zone within the same region geo means the backup will be stored in another availability zone in another region altogether yeah so this is a much better way of doing it but it will be much expensive than the other two so i'm just going to go with locally redundant as this is just a practice so these all is provided next go to networking and then we need a public endpoint because without a public endpoint we cannot log in into our sql database from our local pc or from a different server so we'll not be able to log in so we need a public endpoint if you provide a private endpoint in that case you could log in from an azure uh, server so within azure if you're trying to connect to the database from an azure server resource or an azure service you will be able to connect to it with the private endpoint no access in the sense you can't access it like you only you can uh, attack, uh, basically connect it with your code right you can connect it with your code and try to access it but for now we need public uh, endpoint allow azure resources and services to access the server if you provide a yes uh, so other azure resources like azure virtual machines azure uh, web apps so these resources will be able to access it so you can provide yes if you want and then add current client ip address so this will basically add my uh, ip address so again if you want you can do it so setting yes to allow communications from all resources within the azure boundary setting add current client ip address to yes will add an entry for your client ip address to the server firewall that is whenever somebody is trying to log in so if i'm trying to log in my ip address will be added to the firewall and that will be allowed so i'll be allowed to access it okay so you can also provide no here doesn't uh, need this but again if you provide yes other azure resources can access it now coming to connection policy there are multiple uh, types of connections default is directly connecting so using a uh, client connections originating inside azure and proxy for all connect client connections originating outside azure so if i'm connecting from an azure virtual machine within the azure uh, environment in that case uh, it would use a redirect policy but if i'm trying to connect it from my local pc it will basically create a proxy for it and then if you click on proxy it will automatically create a proxy for all connections which are coming in it doesn't care if it's from azure or outside everything will be proxy and if you provide redirect every single thing will be under redirect connection policy so if you click on this you would uh, be able to know more about the connection policies how exactly the redirect policy works how exactly the po proxy policy works if you want to read more about it you can just click on learn more and understand everything if you want to learn more how uh, firewall works you can click on it and learn, learn more about it so yeah so this is mostly it you don't have to provide anything else in the network security uh, network part and then coming to security a uh, microsoft defender is not required just click it on not now you can see right uh, you can start a 30 day trial period but after that it will cost you 1000 rupees per server per month it's an expensive tool but it's a pretty effective tool but again it's not required for practice if you're going to if you're a company who's trying to secure their data and their databases then you can go for microsoft defender it's really helpful and uh, yeah so you don't have to do or enable anything in the security part everything uh, let it be default only additional settings uh, data source 
uh, start with a blank database uh, or it will automatically add a sample database to it and uh, or you can connect you can basically select the backup which you already have and it will upload the data from the backup into the database i'm just going to go with a sample database so that i could show you that the sample database is available so when i connect to the database adventure works lt database will be already available okay this is what we are going to do so next tags and here again this is optional i'm just going to provide tag sql db okay so you can review it once and yeah you can review it once if everything is proper then you can just click on create it will take few seconds to create the uh, starting deployment and it will take a, a minute or two to create the SQL database and once it's up and running then you can connect to the SQL database. So how to connect to it from your local PC? So if you have a Mac or a Linux instance and you will have to have MySQL client installed. So if it is installed you can just use your regular commands like uh, MySQL, you, your username your password you'll have to provide your password here and then capital P port number so it's an SQL a regular SQL database if it's MySQL then you'll have to go with this okay this is a Microsoft SQL database okay so you can, you can provide the port number and the host name will be provided here okay so that's how you can connect to a MySQL database and yeah so let this be creating I'll also show you one more thing Azure database for MySQL servers. So the same thing, but you can create a database for a MySQL server. So what we've created is basically an SQL database. Okay, let me just uh, let, let it create. So in that same thing, let's create a MySQL database as well. So I'm just gonna do the same process. I'm not gonna waste any of your time and provide a name, scalar DB MySQL one. Currently, this service is not available for your location. What about East US 2? Yeah, it's available over here. Let it be. And I just want the basic one. I'm going to go with the basic one. No. Let the storage be less. Let it be one core. So basically, I don't want anything uh, really powerful. locally redundant is fine yep okay so this is a separate service this is just for mysql server mysql server let me just open this let me open portal in another one yeah and then yeah then you provide the administrator username so it's my username and you provide password next all our additional settings uh, I don't want double encryption. It is fine. So now you can just check it and create the Azure database for MySQL servers. Okay, especially for MySQL servers. Now, um, sorry. So the deployment is succeeded, right? Let me just dismiss this all and go back. SQL databases and the database is up and running. You can see, right? The database is up and running. The database has a server name as well. Okay, so this particular database, you should connect it to uh, a Windows uh, virtual machine. So in this case, you'll have to connect it to a Windows virtual machine. You cannot connect it to MySQL because this is not a MySQL DB. Uh, for example, we can connect it to the query editor. So coding. And you'll have to provide the password. Yeah, so it's connected. So now we already have a sample database within this particular database, right? So if I click on tables, tables should be available from the Adventure Works database. And you can see the Adventure Works one, it's already available. Okay, and then let's see if there are any views and stored procedures. Yeah, there are certain views and there are system stored procedures. There is no not any uh, particular ones created okay so now let's 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 create a query let's select count star from sales ld dot address or instead of address let's provide something else customer
Yeah, so there are 847 rows in customer table. So if I just remove the count and run this query again, so you can see it's taking some time to run, right? Yep, and it shows the entire table. It'll show like it, it's showing 77 rows. Because uh, we'll not be able to scroll the entire thing. But if you open this in basically uh, an SQL server and then connect to this particular database in the SQL server, then you can see everything. This is basically a sample query editor which is provided by uh, Azure, but it's still in preview. It's not completely provided yet. But you can still run certain queries. You can save the query and run it again. Yeah, you can do multiple things using this. And uh, for example, where title equals to Mr. and run this you can basically select any other uh, query also you can uh, let's see this one let's show tables um i don't know why it's not running select title from let's see are any other uh, select star from sales dot product and then we'll try to select something specific from this I think there are a lot of rows that's why the query is taking a lot of time to run so it totally depends because again it's an online query editor it'll obviously take some time if it's a local client in that case it will be a little bit faster than your regular online uh, query editor you can see this right okay so now let's see yeah so this just basically shows just the color Okay, so I just wanted to show you that uh, this is how easy it's to create a database and you can start querying. For example, you can just start querying using the query editor itself. And if you create a MySQL server, in this case, you can directly connect to the MySQL server from your local uh, terminal. Uh, or if you have a MySQL client in your Windows PC, you can connect it to uh, from that as well. And also you will have a query editor in that. You can also like create and run queries directly from the Azure portal itself. So other than that, there is nothing else new over here. So this is basically one more basic session which I wanted to cover. And I have successfully shown you how to create a database and how to run queries in it. So then it's pretty easy to delete it. Just click on delete. Ask uh, db1, delete. And that's it, it'll delete the database. Okay, so you had 250 GB of storage. We uh, allocated space was only uh, MB was only 16 MB. One more thing, there's dynamic allocation. So even though the maximum storage size is 250 GB, you won't pay for 250 GB. You only pay for the storage which is being used. For example, if only 2 GB is being used, you'll only pay for that 2 GB. You wouldn't pay for the 250 GB which you have selected because it will dynamically allocate the storage according to the data which is incoming, okay? So this is basically it, guys. Thank you for attending this session. Meet you in another basic session. Hey guys, welcome to the Azure Certifications video on Scalar Stamp. So in this particular video, we'll be discussing the various Azure certifications which you can take up and which should be helpful in your professional career. So now talking about Azure certifications, I would be covering what are the Azure certifications, the types of Azure certifications, and looking into the developer, solutions architect, administrator, and DevOps engineer certifications. I'm Cody Shurin, and I would be conducting this particular session. I hope you would find it helpful. And before we move on to this particular session, make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our upcoming videos, and also leave a like if you enjoy our content. And also guys, if you have any queries, leave a comment down below, and we would address for all of your queries. Now, without any delays, let's get started. So guys, let's start by understanding what is Azure. So uh, if you want to understand what is Azure and the fundamentals, there is another tutorial in our scale channel. You can go check it out, but I'll just give you a brief and then start off with the video. So Azure is basically a complete cloud platform. It provides you all kinds of cloud services from infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, 
uh, it doesn't provide software as a service as of now, but it also provides function as a service. And there are other things like machine learning as a service, artificial intelligence as a service. There are so many other things which are combined and packaged together and given to you by Azure. So Azure can even enhance on-premises applications. That basically means you can connect Azure services to your on-premises applications to make them even better. Or if you want one particular aspect of your on-premises application to be running on Azure, you can also do that. So Azure integrates the cloud services uh, so that you need to develop, test, deploy, and manage. So basically you can develop applications on Azure, you can test applications, you can deploy them, in Azure itself. And then once you've deployed it, you can still manage your applications using the various monitoring and managing tools. Okay, so all of this while taking the efficiencies of cloud computing. So that basically means you use pay as you go pricing. That basically means, again, you only pay for what you use. You don't pay for all the hardware. You don't pay for the maintenance. You don't pay for the uh, security professionals or networking professionals. You don't pay for anything that you only pay for what you're using. Okay and also global availability, high availability. You can scale out and scale up according to your needs. You can do everything using Azure. Okay, so now the types of Azure certifications. So essentially there are other types uh, in Microsoft. There are so many different Microsoft certifications. There is a Office 365 one, there are a SharePoint, there is so many different certifications. But when it comes to Azure, there are essentially nine certifications, developer, administrator, solutions architect, data engineer, data scientist, AI engineer, DevOps engineer, security engineer, and functional consultant. So over here, the main four, that is the main four certifications, which actually uh, involve Azure completely is developer, administrator, solutions architect, and develop, DevOps engineer. These four certifications are the one which are actually directly relevant or directly proportionate to the Azure tool, okay? So for example, data engineer, it, you have to be a data engineer, you have to know data engineering tools and also Azure would help you for that. Same thing, data scientist, data, you create machine learning models, you create data science models and it can be deployed in Azure. So that part of Azure is required. Same goes to AI engineering. Again, you create cognitive services, you create these ML models and all that. Once you create that, that basically means that will get deployed into Azure and you would need to know what that is for. Okay, this is basically the certifications. Security engineer, you would know uh, the security aspects of Azure. Functional consultant, it's actually provided here. Microsoft Dynamics 365 and Microsoft Power Platform. So it is not included in Microsoft Azure. So these are the different types of certifications, guys. So now next, we're gonna look into the developer, the administrator, the solutions architect, and DevOps engineer one by one individually. So once we understand what these certifications are for, then I'll open the official website and I'll show you the pricing comparison. That is how much would a certification cost and what certification to take, which would be right for you. Okay. So that's exactly what we're going to see. All right. Learning path. First, we're going to look into developer. So developer is design, build, test and maintain solutions. So this is basically a simple a sentence which tells you what they are doing and developers implement applications and services by partnering with solutions architects and customers. So developers are the people who are developing applications which are going to be deployed on Azure. Okay, so another case is that they partner with solutions architects and customers. So solutions architects are people who uh, given a problem statement will come up with a solution and come up with an architectural solution. So that solution can be passed on to the developer who will develop the solution. And then it would be given back to the solutions architect to check, test it and finish up the architecture and then deploy it into the cloud. Okay, so to uh, get certified as a Azure developer, you don't, there is no prerequisite to this. So this is an optional start, you can see this, right? It's an optional start for those new to Azure. If you're new to Azure and if you wanna start off with Azure, then go with Azure Fundamentals, with this, which is the AD 900 examination. So this, for this examination, it's completely fundamental. So you would have to know all of Azure, but you would have to know them theoretically. You would have to know what, uh, which services for what and understand the basic elements and the underlying principles of Azure. So to uh, get certified as a Azure developer, you will have to get this particular certification, Azure Developer Associate Certification. And to get this certification, you'll have to take this examination, which is developing solutions for Microsoft Azure, all right? So once you clear the certification, 
you will be awarded this particular Microsoft Certified Azure Developer Associate certification. So this is the learning path for developer. Now coming to administrator. So administrators implement, monitor, and maintain Microsoft solutions, including major services related to compute, storage, network, and security. So to be very simple, administrators are people who are uh, monitoring your complete architecture. Let's say your company is using Azure. So there would be servers, there would be uh, storage units, there would be database engines, there would be um, various kinds of Azure services which are running. So the administrator or the administration team would be people who would be monitoring this entire architecture using various monitoring tools. Like if you want to monitor tools, in that case, Azure itself provides a tool called Azure Monitor. And you can use that to monitor each and every service in Azure. And also, while you're monitoring it, obviously, if there is some issue with the server, you should be able to troubleshoot it. If it goes down, you should be able to manage it. And then also the main task is to maintain all of them. If there is a new configuration file which has to be added, you should know how to add it to all the servers. Let's say if there are a thousand servers, you cannot go into each server and upload this file. You would have to have some configuration management system set up already in order to basically make sure that configuration file is added to all of those thousand servers in one go. And uh, so again, this is an optional start as your fundamentals. Uh, to get this particular, uh, so to become an Azure Certified uh, Administrator, you'd have to get the Azure Administrator Associate Certification. So the certification name itself is Microsoft Azure Administrator. Okay, coming to the next one, which is Learning Path Solutions Architect. So Solutions Architects have expertise in compute, network, storage, and security. So Solutions Architects are basically people who are given a problem statement by a customer or by the company itself, and they come up with a solution which will eventually be created on the Azure cloud. So the solutions is, solution is basically an infrastructure, uh, infrastructure in the sense, for example, let's say you want to launch an application and you want the front end of the application to be on the Azure cloud and you want the back end and the database to be on your on-premises data center. In that case, Solutions Architect will come up with a solution on how to make this particular thing work. Should you have a VPN between the on-premises network and the Azure cloud or should it be public or is there any other way to do this? Should you create a private network and then create a pairing connection between these two? So yeah, so these are the things which Solutions Architects will come up and they will figure out the best solution and create an architecture plan. And once that is done, once it's approved, they will be creating it on the Azure cloud. So that basically it is. But to become a Solutions Architect, you will have to have a prerequisite. So you'll have to clear this particular examination. That is Azure Administrator Associate Examination. So once you clear this, you would have to take another examination, which is Azure Infrastructure Solutions. So this is the uh, certification, which is meant for the Solutions Architect one. So once you have the prerequisite and once you complete this examination, you would be given the Azure Solutions Architect Expert Certification. Got it? So this is basically Solutions Architect in Azure. Coming to the final certification, which is the DevOps Engineer Certification. So the DevOps Engineer Certification, uh, it combines people, processes, and technologies to continuously deliver valuable products and services that meet end user needs and business objectives. So if you know what DevOps engineering is, so it's basically uh, making sure the product development lifecycle is much faster than before. So basically making sure a release is happening very uh, often. The release can be every three days, the release can be every two days. So basically, let's say if there is a minor upgrade to your application, that minor upgrade would be made and that would be immediately released as a new upgraded version of the application so that your customers and your end users would know there is always a new feature available. That basically means that the team from the company are working hard in order to make sure there's a new feature available every two days or every three days that will basically make sure the end users are satisfied that basically they would know that whatever feedback is being given, it's taken in and that is being developed as features, right? So that's basically what a DevOps engineer will do. But in this case, uh, to clear the DevOps engineering certification and to get certified as a DevOps engineer expert, you would have to have uh, one or multiple associate certifications. You can have the Azure administrator, or the Azure Developer Certification before you get the DevOps Engineer Certification. Because again, it's not an easy certification. You'll have to have one of these. And let's say you have Azure Administrator, then 
you will have to go for the devops engineer expert uh, certification so there would be a devops engineer examination which is the az 400 so if you clear the az 400 you would be awarded the devops engineer expert certification so to look at this in more detail let me open the website so let's discuss uh, the certifications cost and everything and that would be the last part of this particular session all right so this is the certification as i told you these are the nine certifications so let me first open developer so developer and associate are pretty similar the cost and everything is similar uh, the learning path is similar because the optional one is to take up the azure fundamentals and once you take up the azure fundamentals then you'll have to take up these examinations so i'm just going to cover one of it so that that will apply for both then solutions architect and let me also open devops engineer all right so now let's discuss devops developer first before moving on so yeah so first uh, we're seeing developer so we've already seen this particular certification path which i showed you right so now let me just open uh this fundamental certification because we were discussing this but we've not yet covered about it right so let me just give you a brief through it so microsoft certified azure fundamentals known as the azure 900 certification so one thing you can do you can open the official website uh, so this particular page and if you want to see what exactly would be covered you can just come down and check out the certification skills outline if you open that you would be given this particular list and you would be uh, given so basically you should be able to describe cloud concepts describe core azure concepts so all of this is described it's not uh, create or deploy or manage it's just theoretical so if you know this you would be able to create the azure fundamentals examination so once you clear the fundamentals examination you would be given the fundamentals certification that's basically it okay so this is the uh, this is a very simple certification you can see should have foundational knowledge of cloud services and how those services are provided with microsoft azure so so one more thing i wanted to share here uh, so every time you want to check the pricing for an examination uh, you will have to click on the examination window so once you click on it so exam ac 900 so if you clear the ac 900 examination you would be awarded the azure fundamental certification right so you can check out the cost in your particular country so let's say i'm from india so i'll just check the price for my country so in india the price is 3696 rupees okay so uh, again you can it will vary according to the country you are in and you can select that and you can check out and you can buy a buy the exam directly from here and start with it okay and again skills measured everything will be provided here you can just check out the download exam skills outline and you can understand even better uh, yeah so this is the fundamentals let me close this now coming to the developer one so uh candidates for this particular examination will have subject matter expertise in designing building testing and maintaining cloud applications and services on microsoft azure okay so that's basically it and azure developers partner with cloud solutions architects cloud database administrators cloud administrators and clients to implement these solutions and uh, yeah so again more information will be provided like a candidate for the certifications should have one to two years professional development experience and experience with microsoft azure so this is basically the recommended amount of experience with azure so it could be professional experience where you're working in a company or it could be experience where you are working it on a more personal level and uh, so yeah so because to clear the examinations you don't have to work in a company if you have all the right skills and right knowledge you can still clear the examinations yeah, so this is the examination let me click on this okay so the examination which you have to take up to get uh, the azure developer certification is basically 204 and the same thing if it is azure administrator it's 104 azure az 104 if you clear the certification you will be awarded the microsoft azure uh, developer certification and again even here everything is the same details which is provided if you want to see what will be covered in the examination just come down click on this it will open this particular page it will it will basically give you every single instance for example in this particular module so this is the revised new guide so let's say in first module what are the things which you'll have to learn so you'll have to learn how to provision in virtual machines how to configure well, validate and deploy arm templates how to configure container images for solutions so every single aspect would be provided as a sentence so you should be able to 
do whatever sentence so for example if i tell are you able to do this will you be able to authenticate an authorized user and apps by using as your active directory you should be able to do that so that's basically why they have provided this particular list right so you can do this for every single examination you can check out the skills outline and understand and learn what is actually required okay so this is basically the exam for uh, easy 204 okay so now if it's the same thing it's 104 and you can just check it out and let's look at the pricing for this examination let me go to india so again you can check out according to your country again for this particular examination for the associate one in india it's 4800 rupees going back to solutions architect now so this is the certification let me click on this and over here you can see the whatever is in red that basically means microsoft air uh, microsoft have added them recently okay so exam az 302 so it used to be 304 and they are planning to retire exam 304 on march 31 by 2022 so it basically means after 2022 this examination won't be available you will have to take up the exam az 305 so right now it is available in a beta version but after march 31 it will be the only available certification for azure solutions architect but you can still take it up it won't uh, change anything so to become an azure solutions architect expert to get this particular certification you'll have to earn the azure administrator associate certification and pass the az 305 examination or pass exam uh, az 303 and 304 or pass exam az 303 so you, first thing you'll have to do is pass the azure administrator certification and then you'll have to pass these two examinations 303 or 304 to get the certification if you want to take two exams in that case uh, you will have to do it before march 31 of 2022 right but let's say if you do not want to do that then you'll have to take up this examination and then exam az 305 so this is one more method of earning it but if you don't want to do this in that case if you already have an Azure Administrator certification, you can directly take up the AC305 examination and that's more than enough. The only case in which if you do not have the Azure Administrator certification, you will have to take up two certifications because this is not an associate one, this is an expert certification. So you'll have to go with AC303 and 304 or 303 and 305. Okay. So now let's look at the details of AC305 examination. So it's called the designing uh, Microsoft Azure infrastructure solutions. And uh, let's look at the pricing. It would again be 4,800. Yeah, so in India it's 4,800. So here they would have provided the skills measured and to check out each and every line in skills, uh, skills measured, you can just click on this and look into it. All right. And uh, one more thing which I wanted to talk about. Yeah, so basically, uh, Again, I would suggest you to take up the administrator certification and then go for the AC305 instead of going for the AC303 and uh, then taking the AC305 because if you take the AC303, it will be retired by March 31 and I don't think uh, it would be uh, helpful after that. So I would suggest you to clear the administrator one and then go for the AC305 because let me tell you why. Because the AC303 examination costs you the same right but if you take up the azure administrator associate certification which will again cost you the same but at the end of it you would be having two certifications you would have the azure administrator certification and also the azure solutions architect expert certification but if you take up the az303 and az304 or the az303 and az305 at the end you would be given only one certification but it would be for the same price so that's why I suggest first clearing up the uh, Azure Administrator Certification, then go for the Solutions Architect Certification. Okay, so this is basically the Solutions Architect Certification, guys. And final certification is the DevOps Engineer Certification. And again, even DevOps Engineer Certification cannot be di taken directly. You should either have the Azure Administrator or the Azure Developer Certification. Okay, so that is pretty clear, right? We already discussed Azure Administrator and Developer. So clear one of those certifications. And so once you clear that, you would have to take up another exam, which is the AZ400. 
So it's called the designing and implementing Microsoft DevOps solutions. It will also cost the same price. 4,800. So let me click on it. So passing score is 700. Uh, you can learn more about the scores here. So let's look into that. And uh, yeah, so everything skills measured is provided over here. To gain more understanding, just click on the download exam skills outline and check out every single thing over here, right? So you've seen the pricing. We've seen what exactly are these certifications, different types of certifications, uh, what certification to take up to clear and get what certification. So everything is clear, right? I, I hope it's clear. And uh, yeah, so the final thing I just wanted to talk about this, which is what would be the scores you need to pass. So all technical examinations scores are reported on a scale of one to a thousand and 700 would be the passing score. That would be like a 70%. So any score of 700 or greater is a pass. Any score below 700 is a fail. So there is no particular ranking. It's not necessary that you have to get a thousand. It doesn't matter because anyway, it would be a pass. There is no grading system here. You just have to gain more than 700 score. And uh, so the actual number of items you need to answer correctly to pass is determined by, determined by a group of subject matter experts in conjunction with the Microsoft psychometrician during the development and maintenance of the exam. So when they're creating the exam, according to the uh, difficulty of the examination, they would be deciding what are the correct questions. Uh, and if you answer these questions correctly, then you would be passing the examination. Uh, so let's say you would have this doubt what to do if you fail an examination. And again, there is a waiting period before you retake the examination. If you fail for the first time, you can take the examination the next day after waiting for 24 hours. Okay, so this you can do if you fail for the first time, but let's say for the second time, there would be a little more time. For example, you'll have to wait for 14 days or a month according to the number of retakes. Okay, uh, to understand an examination report, uh, the numeric score for overall exam output, you would be given the numeric score, which you have taken if you passed or failed and uh, a bar chart, which shows which skill which part of the examination you've done really well and that will highlight your expertise in a particular skill right and then detail on how to interpret your results okay so these are basically the different types of scores guys and uh, these are frequently asked questions you can basically look into this uh, so i scored zero in one of the sections how is this possible the number of questions that measure each skill area is determined through the blueprinting process Sections of the exam measure critical and or more frequent performed skills will contain more questions than that assess less important or less frequently performed skills. So basically, uh, when you look at this, let me show you this. So the percentage is provided here, right? Develop Azure compute solutions. So that basically means over here it is 25 to 30 percent. Most of the questions would be from this particular section. The second most questions would be from this particular section because the percentage of the weightage is provided as 20 to 25 percent. And then there would be equal number of questions from this, this and this. So accordingly, your uh, rank would be provided from a determined skill. So let's say if you perform really well in Azure Compute Solutions, that would be even better if you perform uh, not that good in, let's say, this particular section. Uh, because more questions would be from this area and you can score more than if you do well in this particular area. Okay, so this is basically it. There is nothing else to it. Uh, okay, so guys, so this is basically the Azure certification uh, video. So I hope you understood about all the important certifications and I hope you got a clarity on what certification to take up. So if you want to get into development, uh, if you want to develop applications for the Azure Cloud, go with developer. If you want to administer the Azure Cloud, if you don't want to involve yourself in development or creating solutions, if you just want to monitor and maintain the entire architecture, go with administrator. If you want to create solutions, if you want to uh, solve problems which are arriving in the Azure Cloud, go with solutions architect. Again, and DevOps engineer, if you have relevant skills, if you have a certification in Azure administrator or developer, then go for the DevOps engineer certification because it's more of a bigger field and uh, you should be experienced with administration or development in order to get into it in this particular certification. So that's it guys. So thank you. So guys, that's it for today's session. 
I hope this session was helpful and informative. If you have any queries, leave a comment below and we would be addressing and helping you out. And also leave a like if you enjoy our content and share and subscribe again if you like our content. Thank you.